uh, I will have to. Uh, I, I can get started whenever you guys are, are ready. But oh you know. yeah, I'm I'm ready whenever. Oh uh, sure, yeah. No. I mean, we're really all night for me, so I should probably get this on the road. As soon as possible. <laughs> Actually, considering how long winded we tend to be with these. Just listen to the Rock Marciano episode or the year-end episode. The year-end episode, which was edited together from two episodes, one of which was so long-winded it went seven fucking hours. And oh, we had to shit. go. We had to go. We had to. We had to whittle it down to like five, I think, total. Fucking hell! Five out of a seven-hour and a two and a half-hour episode. True. It, well, crazy. in in fairness, the first one we BS'd for like at least half the episode, so it wasn't yeah, half really- the episode was un unairable, just bullshitting. Yeah, just about yeah, random stuff. Drink <laughs> so. Right, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, um, I am working tomorrow, but I don't work till, like, at least afternoon, just because of the kind of job I do, warehouse stuff, so. Uh, oh, I do warehouse stuff. I get up at 3.45 in the morning. <laughs> oh, so you do, you do night shifts, do you? Uh, well, I mean, I do first shift. I do morning shift, but I have a 45-minute drive in. My day starts at 6. Oh, God, that's so dead. Yeah, it sucks. It's not great. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. do inventory control. I uh, I try to control the inventory. Right. Which okay. You yeah. think would be a lot easier considering where the fuck is it going to go? It finds places. Yeah, you would. Right. You definitely, you definitely would think that, but <laughs> clearly not. No, nah, it's hard, hard stuff. Warehouse. It really is hard stuff. Yeah, but anyway, we're, this is not warehouse talk. No, this is not. This is not the warehouse <laughs> podcast. Right? The warehouse. This is definitely not the. For those of you looking for a drinking episode, this is definitely not the yeah. warehouse podcast. Yeah, we Trojan horse yeah. a warehouse chat episode. Like we tagged <laughs> all these things like drainers, drain gang, sad, yeah. coal, you, and then we just you, talk about where the minutia of working in a warehouse for three and a half hours instead. Well, there's got to be some music video where that blade has shot in a warehouse. I feel like that's got to um, got to materialize at some point. Maybe in a refrigerated warehouses. So. Yeah. The obedient video was at a gas station. I think. I don't think that. Yes, was it warehouse. was. Yeah, that yeah. was that was a great video. A great that, video. That was a great video. That's yeah. one of my favorites. Uh, well, speaking of uh, music videos uh, from Blade and and Dre Gang, uh, welcome to this week's Living Off Borrow Time podcast. Uh, I'm. Not Patrick doing the intro, but I'm Caleb. <laughs> uh, Optimal Audio, as you guys know, we have, of course, Patrick with me, as we usually do. And special guest this week who has made an appearance on the show before, uh, it's Chris, a.k.a. 108 Mics. Hey, guys. A.k.a. Destroy Me on RYM, if you know him mm-hmm. uh, through that. But uh, the, the, the foremost um, uh, 108 Mics in the, in the SoundCloud uh, a scene and you might remember him from our dark trap you know bmb and jewel set episode which has done very very well so thank you everybody mm. for listening to that uh we really needed chris's knowledge in that episode or else i would have been clowned by people like draco montana the whole time <laughs> which is which is what happened <laughs> but it's fine <laughs> anyway i mean i got um i got uh corrected a few times after so you mm. know I'm not. Uh, I didn't do too well there, to be honest. I was, so much uh, 
limited information or lack thereof about that's uh, the thing those yeah. guys on the internet that when we p- posted that that podcast episode it was one of the first things that came up if you googled uh the term jewel set so mm-hmm. that uh that makes sense but thankfully there's been more more uh stuff written and, and you know blogged about those guys since then but we're not here to talk about those guys we're here to talk about i would say one of the more um interesting and and important uh movements in in underground uh you know hip-hop in the last 10 years i'd say Mm -hmm. um and that comes from sweden uh and the, the drain gang collective uh led by blade the most probably famous member of the collective echo 2k tie boy digital and of course, uh, White Armor and Young Sherman behind the boards doing their thing. They're also known as Gravity Boys, uh, GTB, GTBSG, all the acronyms you want to use. And um, I think Smog that. Smog Boys as well, originally. Smog right, Boys was the first name. Right, right. I, I forgot about that one. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a like 2010 name or some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it yeah. really the Sheesh Smog Boys or something? There's something out there with the Sheesh Smog Boys too. Maybe, yeah. Um, and I think that might just be a white armor thing because it's related to um, the ripping cannabis bowls. Oh, DJ cannabis. Ripping pride bowls. DJ yeah. cannabis. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My like soul seeks DJ cannabis. Looking for other stuff under that name. There's something about like small hashish boys or some shit. Oh right, uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, they had some weird names. That, I mean, they got they got weird names now actually, but they had yeah. weird, they had weirder names back then for sure. Yeah, there's a there's a boot there's a there's some Smog Boys bootleg that's out there, but I haven't listened to it. But uh, oh. that might have be what I don't know if Patrick ran into that, but that's that's out there. Uh, but yeah, these guys. I mean, you know, you could say that there are landmarks in in cloud rap and various different things i mean even in the recent years you know uh, some of the artists moving into you know more ambient stuff and uh even i mean i, I disagree with this genre descriptor on roam but there's been some of their stuff classified under the art pop umbrella of late but anyhow, i would they're... not necessarily disagree although i do disagree i think art pop itself is painted too broadly to use in general like i feel like art pop itself is not defined enough like, if you're going to use genres, you need to be better about defining them. That is the fucking yeah. dorkiest thing I've ever said. Yeah. This podcast is an RYM podcast. which covers a lot of ground. But uh, I think if you're uh, going to use art pop, I think that some Blade stuff, more recent Blade mm. stuff, I think, as opposed to earlier yeah. stuff. Like, certainly stuff like Working on Dying, like, I would not say qualifies as that at all. But no. stuff like the most recent, and I don't know, there's some other guy credited on this. That most recent Charlie collab that I rated today that I listened to, like, five times. Mac and Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. I yeah, they, they've had a partnership for that. For I would years. qualify that as art pop. That well, that was basically a Charlie song, though. Um, well, that was the remix to one of the songs on the Good Luck album, which yes. I, I I wouldn't call I wouldn't call that art pop necessarily. Um, because to me, art pop, I, I don't know. To me, art pop is like experimental in nature. So maybe yeah. I would say like maybe Exeter is art pop to me. Yeah, I would just, say I would say Exeter E would qualify. Definitely E in, in yeah. a way. Yeah. So I, I was I spoke too soon on the art pop thing. E I think is art pop, but yeah, I think overall it's kind of hit and miss for me with how the genres are applied. But I guess it makes sense because they're pretty genre they've become pretty genre fluid artists over the years and we'll get to that eventually because this is a two part episode but yes. for the first part i kind of had like a sort of central thesis for the episode um, and i've kind right. of alluded to this before in uh, if you guys had listened to the RCB episode you know back when mm-hmm. but um, there's really two sides to drinking for me at least in terms of how the the career arc of of the guys has gone and it starts with like the early singles you know the gravity boys days you know that comp and probably i would say up until red light would be part one and then part two is basically from that point onward where you can see their notoriety increase their popularity increase and now they have a pretty good foothold like i wouldn't say they're mainstream by any stretch of the imagination but a lot of their a lot of Blade's recent stuff, like, you know, Echo, all their recent stuff does does good numbers, you know, into the seven figures plays and all that stuff. So they definitely have a, a level yeah. of, of mainstream appreciation helped along, of course, by they have big followings on, you know, TikTok and other places like that. And obviously there's a clear mm. lineage of influence into other artists and other scenes. But we can talk about all of that, of course. But 
I my, my the part that I we're gonna do this episode is basically from the the early singles that the 2013 to you know late 2017 early 2018 period. Okay, okay, yeah, that sounds cool. Um, I would agree with with what you say, obviously about um that was the point after Red Light. You know, with that being reviewed by bigger publications and stuff. So <laughs> sometimes mm-hmm. for the for for the worse, as we know. Um, yeah. But there, there is a red light review out there that is notorious, but it's uh, yeah. Is it and the it's fucking tanked. melon? Is it the fucking melon? <laughs> I was yeah. trying not to refer to it, but yes, it is. It is. Okay, we're not even going. Well, that's it. Never mind. I mean, okay. it was <laughs> fair enough. There was a jumping off point for red light where it got some attention because he gave it like a one, I think, or something like that. Yeah, that's right. It, it was that's just correct. yeah, it was a one, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like a really bad score, which. Which I think hurt its reputation on every music rating website I've ever been on. Yeah, because yeah, on OYM it was below three for like so long. Yeah, like when so I first long. when I first heard it in 2018, it was uh, and that was the first Blade album I heard, by the way. But when I first oh, heard right. it, interesting. Um, I first heard it and it was its rating was a lot lower than it is now. It's actually kind of like cool that it's climbed significantly. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, no, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. To me, there's like three stages to, <laughs> to it, and the first one ends at ever since for me because yeah. that's such a drastic change uh, for everything. And then the second stage ends at Ice Dancer, but that's just how I categorize it. Like, no, I, that's a good point. That that's a good. I, I think there. I think you're right. I think there's um, once you get to like the Blade albums. There's yeah. a, there's a lot more material, so there's a you can hear the. The evolution it's a different kettle of fish for sure like it's like a total a total totally different mindset to like like he starts he started putting stuff on spotify like for the first time and stuff mm. like before that it was like all soundcloud shit so it was uh yeah right. but i agree i agree with your splitting up of this because this helps distinguish like the blade people know now uh, and uh Ty Boy and echo obviously mm-hmm. to a lesser extent as they've not put as much music out as of late but and and the blade that like I first heard in like twenty fourteen for for example so yeah right. that's like definitely I agree with that. Now, yeah, I, oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead, Patrick. Oh yeah, I mean real quick, just coming from a neophyte's perspective, because I listened to the vast majority of this for the first time for the benefit of this podcast, much less knowledgeable than these two. But I guess that's kind of part of the concept here is that uh, Chris is the expert, and I'm coming to this fresh, and we're kind of going to contrast our opinions on it, and. Mm. So um, I think that my view on it, just from the stuff that I've heard for the first half, I haven't even heard the majority. The second half, it'll be stuff a little bit that I'm revisiting because I started getting into Blade more recently. So I'd heard Good Luck and um, Fool something. I mean, I'm, I'm the, fool. To- the, the Fool, yeah. the most recent the fool. one. Yeah. I've heard those recently and the one with the numbers in it, um, three, 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 yeah, three, yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard all of those before and had varying degrees of appreciation. Three, three, uh, triple three, I liked a lot. Good luck in the fool. I'm a little more like a little more lukewarm on the fool. I like more than good luck. I actually have, although again that Charlie remix that I just heard today off of something from Good Luck, I thought was remarkable, but it also sounded nothing like I really remember Good Luck sounding for the most part. It's um, quite different. It's so different. I would say that um, I think there's more. Like I can't divvy it up into eras. I'd say there's more two sides to their sound that I've noticed, or like there's a definitely pop leaning side and a more rap leaning hip hop leaning side like and they're never gonna have dusty mm. drums or anything but there are definitely songs that are more like hip hop we're rapping like flowing forward versus a more willing to experiment in like space type forward um I'm, I'm putting this very poorly but i think it makes a little bit of sense where there's like <laughs> yeah you know, it does it and does i feel t- like you can see hints of that like it all obviously starts out more hip hop influence like the earliest material i listened to was um the Ripping Private Bubbles, DJ Cannabis, and The Judgment Day by White Armor one. And oh, uh, yeah. both of those felt to me like um, Clams Casino era, a little B uh, in the Clams Casino era, sort of, mm-hmm. where it's like hip hop, but it's very in an ambient space. It's pushing the boundaries of what a standard hip hop beat can be in a lot of places, but you're still dealing with standard hip hop beats. But then you get to something like Ice Dancer a few like many years later. I still see them building on that ambient space, but he's taking it somewhere completely different. Mm. Yes, I I agree definitely. Um, I think I think the reason Blade started working with um, different producers outside of White Armor as of like 2016 onwards, like before that he was, but like he wouldn't have made a full album with someone else. I don't think prior to like 2017 18. 
Um, I think the reason is obviously White Armour did, as you rightfully pointed out, begin life as a not a Clams clone exactly, but his stuff was sounding ve- it was very typical cloud rap sound, um, and it evolved v- very very quickly over the like the next two or three years to a point where like their styles mesh so well together that like that's why that's why we get a really good Blade and White Armour album every like two years now, or well more frequently than that recently, but. I think they like to space their stuff out, so that that explains why stuff like I stands happens, where Blade can be like, "I'm gonna mess around a bit with the song structure now, and you know, and and maybe go a little a little bit more experimental." And I think that's why that happens. Uh, that's that's kind of how I see it. Yeah, no, I I, um, I agree. And since Patrick kind of uh, alluded to his brief background with Blade uh, and drinking as a whole, uh, these you know the whole group has been definitely in the last two years, like an obsession point for me as it has been for a lot of uh, people. I am really just was blown away uh, by a lot of their stuff. And I felt remiss for not getting to it sooner and only hearing red light as like my point of introduction. But what was interesting is, you know, I like blade now and, and echo and, and to a lesser extent, tie boy, but I don't want to leave him out. Um, you know, those are some of my favorite artists, um, you know, just in music and I, you know, getting into Blade with Red Light and then going to ever since and, and then down the line um, was, was huge. It was huge for me. And once it kind of clicks with you, you know, it was something where the majority of my listening at like the, you know, I would say the early onset of last year um, was just predominantly uh, these guys. And it was weird because I had heard Red Light, you know, roughly in the same year that it came out. I heard ever since shortly thereafter and then I just like didn't listen to any of the other other material for a while until like Legendary Member and E came out. So ah, right. I, I don't really know what I was doing with my life. I mean, I was busy, <laughs> but still, I, I don't really know what was going on there. But, <laughs> but that was kind of my whole. So I had to go back and listen to a lot of the earlier stuff. But it was definitely rewarding. And now I've listened to a lot of these albums, you know, many many times. And and you know, all all, all three are some of my favorite artists, especially, um, you know, especially, uh, Blade and, and Echo, but Chris, you, you mentioned that you had heard them, uh, in 2014. So how did you get into them? Um, yeah. So as well, uh, as Pat said, I was the same. I heard Young Lean first and mm-hmm. the novelty behind Young Lean, um, was, was, was ha funny Swedish kid. He's mm-hmm. dancing to, uh, the fucking Mimi vaporwave aesthetic background thing. This this is a funny song, but obviously, from from that I listened to Unknown Death 2002. I was like, "Damn, this this mixtape is crazy!" And I hear Blade on uh, Night Vision, specifically Night Vision, and hear Heal You Blade one or two. But Night Vision, I was like, "Damn, this guy sounds crazy." Um, and then a, about a year later, it, I can't say it was like the day it dropped, but it, it was not long after. I, I I saw someone someone must have reposted on SoundCloud. It was Glue, and I was like. Okay, I'll give this a listen because I enjoyed um, Lean's mixtape, and yeah, it was really like definitely that that and hearing the GTB comp, the semi unofficial or whatever one. Never really decided if that was official or not. Um, uh, between hearing those two at like roughly the same time period, that was just, it was just immediate for me. Uh, however, I did kind of lose interest in all that stuff a little bit like the following year, and it wasn't until ever since it came out that I then uh, rediscovered my love for it, and I've been consistent listening pretty much ever since. But definitely, definitely loved Glue since pretty much since it first came out, and that is still my favourite Blade project, for sure. 100%. Uh, mm. it's, it's just the most... In- it's it's still the most interesting to me, despite all the crazy stuff he's done since. Um, and I also remember really wanting an Echo album back then, when he dropped his verse on eBay, and I was so excited to hear an Echo project in that style, which we never did. But uh, I was so uh, so excited for that, for the possibilities of like solo Tire Boy and Echo projects. And yeah, it it was it was just a great time to be a fan of those guys. I think uh, back in 2014-15, that was a, that, that was a really good time. The we were getting you know getting fed like every week, kind kind of thing. It was it that all oh, that's what it felt like at least. So yeah, that's how I started out. Um, not from the very beginning, but as as, cl- as close to it as I as I think um, any of us are, at least. But uh, yeah, yeah, definitely been a long term fan for sure. Yeah, and and you know, I want to 
just touch on Young Lean really quick. Obviously, you know, there's we can definitely do a separate episode on him, but Young Lean, who I had heard first, I, I had heard, I think Kyoto was the first. No, I was, um, it wasn't Kyoto. It was um, Ginseng. Gin, ginseng, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was the first one. Um, and I, I'm so stupid that I had listened to like subsequent Young Lean albums, like when they came out. And I just never even looked at uh, any of the other, like, you know, Drain Gang stuff in, like, 2014, 15, 16. Oh, right. I had listened to Yeah, I was just absolutely tone deaf. Like, just, <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> leave me leave me behind. But, uh, yeah, that okay. was – it's, kind of, it's kind of embarrassing to think about that now. But Well, uh, I've thought this since Warlord came out. I was not impressed by either of Blade's features on Warlord at all. In fact, to the point where I was like, "Damn, does he does 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 he suck now?" Like when they came out, I've, they've warmed on oh, me a little right. bit since then. But the, the, he's like his feature on Highway Patrol is not like that's not like top tier Blade. So I wouldn't blame someone if they if they heard Warlord mm-hmm. and were like, and were looking for new artists, like, and they were like, eh, "I don't think I'll bother." Like I wouldn't blame them for that, right? Specifically, and I, I don't. Uh, Link Project Blade was on. Oh no, he was on Frost God too. But yeah, my, my point, my point still stands. I, I don't blame you for that specifically. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, but um, I do think. I mean, Lean had mentioned in an interview, and uh, I think this it's a good thing to start on because you know, um, he'll talk about we're going to get into their early stuff very soon, and t- you know their influences and what what it came from. Lean talked about being really enraptured by like SGP and Raider clan around like that time when they, you know, they were all in high school and they were like listening to that music and watching those videos and like wanting to do shit like that. And I think that's interesting when you look at, but they're, they're just high school kids in Sweden and they're just like going to go film like a video at this mall after they get off like school. And, you know, yeah. next thing you know, like, you know, lean just picks up some Arizona iced tea and then it's like a, a little like, uh, moment in, in a way, but it is it is kind of interesting that that was what they were that that was part of what they were listening to. Obviously, Blade has uh, and the the guys have uh, numerous influences from what I've read and heard over the years. But mm. Lean talked about like in the early days, that's what they were fucking with. Definitely, you can you can definitely hear that um, Metro Zoo as well. I believe I believe Lean has mentioned um, as influence. Mm-hmm. As, as, as an answer, for sure. Uh, I think all, all of that really can that early stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you guys want to just get into the uh, the early stuff? Mm. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's. I mean, so is the earliest stuff. So is um, the cannabis stuff the earliest stuff, or Chris? Is there anything earlier that you've heard? Um. Because that's 2011, wait. I believe. So. Well, uh, the the white armor. Take. The white armor written private bowls. Yeah, I think that's. 20. Yeah, I mean that that was that was like on like no one had that till very recently. Exactly, right? was that it... was recovered recently. That was recovered within the past couple of months. So I mean, but I that was actually the first stuff I've heard from aside from the recent Blade stuff in a while. And then right. there there was the Judgment Day mix, which was 2013 or 14, which they're both in the kind of the same style. Um, See. And, Judgment Day mix was 2013, so and that shows up again. Um, they had all. I talked about this with Optimal before we got you on the call. Was that all the producers dropped like their discog or like somebody compiled them, some fan like all their into like discographies. Uh, they're all up on RYO, and I think we can talk about those in the second half. Young Sherman too, like so. Right. So yeah, we can do all those in the second half. But I think the, um, these two are specifically worth mentioning because again, it's like the whole thing I said about the hip hop side versus the pop side. And this is where it's like their most overtly hip hop stuff more show more so on the recovered tape than the judgment day mix. The judgment day mix definitely has like more leaning ethereal stuff, more like the Enya, obviously like Enya number six. Yes. Single. That's the one that more mostly heavily hints at where the direction that you get with like the later uh, drain stuff, I would say the, Stuff that they'd really flesh out on, like Tiger, Ever Since, and Ice Dancer, are the three that most spring to mind for me. And like you can see that, like the seeds of that there. Like it's still the drums are different. The structure seems more similar to like a like a typical beat tape, I would say, especially more on the cannabis one. Which again, mm-hmm. how like how intended for like 
distribution was that if they're only finding it now? Like that probably means, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Probably hardly. Yeah, you probably thought no one would ever find that again. The balls were private. They were supposed to be shared with a close. They were they, they were very private balls. So um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whereas yeah. the Judgment Day mix is like you see a lot of the same ideas, and I think maybe even some of the same beats, just like recycled but polished up, put into a better sequence, a stronger sequence. Yeah, and I would say that that's that's the vert. Like essentially, you're hearing a demo of what two years later he'd put out as a fully finished product, which was kind of like a prologue to what you would get on <laughs> uh, the Blade tape that I'm thinking of from the next year. I want to say it is. That would um, be glue. Glue, yes, which yeah. is what you said. Yeah, I feel like that's much more forward thinking, but it's all progressing yeah. towards that. Well, um, yeah, and I, uh, the Rip and Private Bowls tape came out in the same year as what I believe are the two first Blade songs anyone knows about. And if, if you guys haven't heard that, you may have uh, always high on Tony Hawk. You've I've heard, heard I've heard the set, I've heard Tony Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Hawk has Echo as uh, Malcolm Sex, which is brilliant. Um, <laughs> that took me a second, which says a lot that it took me yeah, a Mal- second. <laughs> yeah. And Blade was going by Ken Burns back then, too. Um, he wasn't even going by Blade. So, that also um, took me a second that that was like a weed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they're, brill- they're, brill- they're brilliant names. Plus, obviously, DJ Cannabis is fantastic. Always High <laughs> is a really short song, um, but it's got a really nice cloud rap beat from White Armor. And those songs were only recovered a few years ago. There's actually a music video to Always High. Um, I think you can see that on Vimeo. It's like, a, it's like the oldest Blade vid. Um, but th- those are the two oldest songs I know about. And from there, you get songs like Oxygen, um, which was re-uploaded multiple times um, and was recently performed in that live set thing we did that Blade did with Echo. Um, so that's really cool that he still likes that one because... Um, he's mentioned in interviews before he doesn't like a lot of his old stuff, so it was definitely cool to see him play that one again. But that was like the first song he did that you could consider, I guess, a Blade song. So yeah, I think that's as far back as it as it goes for him. I could be I could be wrong though. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, there's probably some some unreleased stuff out there that uh, I would be un- unaware of, but. Um... I'm just looking through his names here on ROIM, and is there any DJ Baby Icy Yeti material I need to be aware of? I think that's <laughs> just, I think that's just the name that he dropped Dog Village under because the the evil the evil Blade songs um, weren't even really like official drops. Like he either like put them on YouTube or they were like playing in the background of a of a promotional vid or or even like um, I don't know if I'm I'm not even sure, but like. None of them were like officially released. Like here, here they are on SoundCloud. Like Chainsaw, I think right. is the only one with vocals, um, and the rest of all like ambient type songs. And there's there's one really creepy one called Sleep, which I still think is such a creep. That's such a eerie song. Um, but those songs, people know them as Evil Blade tracks. There's that compilation as well on RYM, which has all all eight songs, I think. Um, oh, and that's that. that sounds interesting. That's all self-produced, so that's very unique stuff. He wouldn't, he wouldn't ever do anything like that again. Um, but yeah, so there's, 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 there's those as well. But I don't think he went by any other aliases uh, properly, as far as I can remember. I mean, he has a bunch of bootlegs, 22 total bootlegs. I don't people know how, people yeah. just make those, though. They just make them like <laughs> playlists. Like, there's like a new one every week, and they're all called things like Frost Titan or like Snowflake God or something like that. They're all... <laughs> It's all just like people like it's just like someone's favorite Blade songs. Yeah, that's what those are. Yeah, which I don't think is the definition of a bootleg, but yeah, it's like there are like four hundred um, Kanye bootlegs on our way. Yeah, right now, and they're yeah. all just demos in a different order. It's the same deal. It's like Yandy one point two and all that shit. It's ridiculous. It's silly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't even realize that there was a glue two in this in the bootlegs. Yeah, uh, that <laughs> one I can understand because glue two at least takes songs that were somewhat from the glue era, right? Um, and tries to make a nice a semi cohesive track list. I wouldn't put songs like Cash in My Jeans out there because that song literally doesn't exist. So it's like yeah. it's just someone playing the Cash in My Jeans is like the one song all Blade fans want, and yet it's obviously yeah. never coming out because it's like so dated at this point. But I can I can admire glue too to an extent, but the rest of that stuff is just silly. But yeah, yeah. Shout out to the one review. 
So. Shout out to the one review on Evil Blade by Spaceman Smock, which is the subject header is Evil Blade Surprise Emoji, and the text of the review is Evil Blade Devil Emoji. Two and a half stars. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're really, they're really cool songs. They're definitely worth a, a listen. <laughs> the two and a half stars really makes it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's the perfect equilibrium, you know? It's perfect. All things balanced. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's funny that's real funny um yeah i mean there's um i think the the earliest like i'm not aware of any you know early singles before that i think when it comes to like blade stuff um i think i wonder what was like the tipping off point for them was it bleach bleach was the first one that had a proper music video like Right. actually shot and filmed and not just like ed- edited to a green screen um because there was right. the uh, there was the i will make you bleed video which again is only on vimeo that's also a great watch if you guys haven't seen that um but bleach was like and i remember i had the bleach a screenshot from that as my cover photo on facebook for like five years because i just never used facebook um, <laughs> I, I thought that video was so cool and it, and it is it's a fantastic song it's definitely one of their best songs um and that was that and the comments are disabled still to this day as well like with all of echo's old stuff so it really gave this air of mystery to it um i think that was definitely the tipping point yeah because that was on the gtb compilation yes um, but a, a lot of the other songs around made around that time i don't think were quite as i don't want to say like high quality in the sense that like because they also they all have that like deliberately semi-lo-fi sound but um mm-hmm. I think Bleach was definitely the most polished one of those. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd say anyway. Yeah, it, it's a it's an awesome song. I remember seeing the video, and also side note, all their early videos have comments disabled, which I, I don't know. Yeah, what the, that, it's that, really strange. That's unfortunate. Um, I think I think it's Echo specifically that wants them disabled or something, because I, I I think some of the old Blade stuff doesn't like. Uh, and Tie Boy, like I think I don't I don't think the Diamonds video has comments to say, for example, I, c- I could be wrong about this, but I thought I thought it was just like songs like Mirage and um, Holding Down Like Gravity that were disabled, but right. I don't know. It, well, c- now it could be video, now most music has comments to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Most new music, so I mean, shout out to your old Droog who, in his you know when he's turned when he did his face turn gimmick or whatever, was nice to everybody, kept all the comments open, and upvoted every single comment. <laughs> <laughs> on his songs, which I thought was the funniest, like 180 ever, like the most sarcastic shit. Literally, every comment he would upvote, <laughs> no matter what it was. It takes takes dedication, right there. To, to it do does. It does. So yeah, uh, so another way that Drain Gang was ahead of their ahead of the time. They were, you know, closing <laughs> comments right before it was cool. But <laughs> yeah, well, you, um, you you talked about uh, Chris. You mentioned like a lot of material around that time being very, you know. Um, washed out or hazy or yeah. lo-fi in a way i think magic is strong is like one of the prime examples of that that's a perfect example yeah yeah it's Definitely. just i mean it's hard to even talk about that song i can't even really tell you what it sounds like because it's, um, it's just like i mean this is a really like internet nerd thing to say but it like sounds like a dream almost it's no it of- does especially the lyrics because they're so like weird and fucking abstract last way he's rapping about wizards on that song or something like it's, it's a really weird it's a really weird song uh, i think I, saw, I think i saw a comment that said it sounds like born slippy on even more acid or, or something something <laughs> weird like that I, it, it, I don't i don't know but i love my magic is strong because it starts with the blade sound effect from blade the movie blade and then it has like the the gunshot sounds and then it just goes into like like as you said washed out that's a perfect description yeah because that song is like um so weird that's definitely one of his weirdest songs yeah it's one of like the more like unique uh, cloud rap uh, anything songs that you'll hear like it's really it's pretty wild and out there <laughs> it's uh, crazy um, the production yeah, is mental on that one i can't even imagine thinking of that in like 2013 to make and who knows if they made it months before like that's yeah, just exactly. a super nuts song that like e- song. even the cloud raps you know staples around that time like, I couldn't see making a, a song like that. Um, no, no. Yeah. That's like, that's like, that's genuinely forward thinking stuff really there because <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff that's that weird and washed out now. But um, 
I mean, yeah. that was definitely an extremity at that time. And I think this is like a, that's a commonality is that while while the the quote unquote like the word the term forward thinking gets gets overused a lot in music criticism and music discussion, yeah. uh, I do I do think it genuinely applies to to some stuff here, no question. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, and and obviously that that was taken that was a uh, clearly it was forward thinking because of the the level of of influence that that they had. But um, yeah, I mean, what I will say from a newcomer's perspective, um, mostly newcomer, well, yeah, pretty much newcomer's perspective is when I started listening to uh, which was the Blade album I listened to when I started this whole binge project for this. Uh, I, yeah, ever since, ever since was the one where I I got definite because then i went back and i listened to earlier stuff after ever since but ever since was the first thing on spotify so i started with that and i would say that i definitely got cutty vibes off that and i said about the early white armor tapes i got clams vibes off that so there's definitely inf- like they're not like forging an entirely new lane but i would say what they do better than or they were doing better than anybody and what made them influential going forward and forward thinking is that they take the idea of like cloud rap and they take it to its natural endpoint in a way a lot of ways where it's just like this super narcotic sound that fits the whole idea of the flow is the most important thing that and that's what makes their rap tracks so just addictive and that's why the evolution from the rap to the r&b worked so well and was able mm. to lead into it so naturally is that everything and why something like um the mat uh what was that the magic song you were talking about because i heard yeah that. magic is strong, magic, yeah. is strong. magic is strong is like that works so well is because that's an early example of just a purely narcotic sound in terms mm. of the lyrics, in terms of the flow, and the instrumental would eventually come to match that and be progressive and weird. And eventually it'll become so weird that Blade couldn't even fit it within a hip hop framework anymore, or even pretend, or even arguably an R&B framework. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, 100%. I think a lot of the songs around that time um while they weren't as weird as that they definitely pushed the line between like i'll make you bleed's another good example like that's like the beat to that is like it's like a it's like a dub song it's like really fucking weird and then tabboy's verse isn't even in time with i'm convinced he wasn't even listening to the beat when he recorded his verse like <laughs> it's it's one of those songs so i def i def i definitely think that it's it's probably an almost accidental influence but i think in general like that kind of like half half hazard evolution from like bedroom project to you know i mean stardom basically in a sense like uh, it is 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 definitely something that's happening a lot quicker now um with a lot of soundcloud artists like you know pe- people are blowing up with like from like in like six month time periods of similar trajectories so it's definitely yeah. interesting to see uh how do you feel about the I guess this is like the f- one of the first of you know it's not an official project, but it sort of kind of is. If I recall, they they did not co-sign it. The Gravity Boys compilation, like what? what how do you feel um, about that? I think that if that was official, it'd probably be the best thing from the group. But like you said, they 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 posted it. They posted it on Twitter when it came out. But I guess that probably just means that they found it and realized that someone had taken the time to do something they couldn't be asked to do maybe i don't know so i don't know but i think i think it's a great project i'm not a fan not a huge fan of the tie boy songs on there but i do really really like every blade song and obviously <laughs> home like gravity is fantastic so um yes i'm yeah. a big i'm a big fan of gtbsg i think it's a great tape yeah that's uh i think it's definitely whether you prefer earlier and later stuff from the group is definitely an essential starting point. Um, yes. And it's, it really, I mean, it has some of the more famous early songs, all pretty much all of them, the most famous early songs from them. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's like a, it's like a 2013 greatest hits that really. I'd say. Yeah. It's also insane. The Hold Me Down Like Gravity came out in that year. Cause that sounds like something that could have came out tomorrow. Oh yeah, one hundred. Yeah, definitely. That's that is definitely, definitely that. That's definitely the <laughs> echo song I point to, where it's like you can hear this. Like yeah. this doesn't sound like anything else. Nah, it's aged amazingly. I think Echo's early stuff just has 
Ah, it's just there's just something about it, man. Like that one and um, Mirage as well. Like I, I think there's just something really like there's something really like like really beautiful, serene, nostalgic um, about those songs. Definitely, I can definitely see why he wanted to move away from that with late with later songs because you know they they made a point of all saying you know we don't really want to uh, we don't we don't want to buy into the whole meme aesthetic and stuff and whatever, but. Um, I definitely think with Hold Me Down, Gravity especially, like you can really tell he put put his he put his whole, you know, he put every he put everything into that song. You can really hear the emotion in that, even though it's just a song. It's just a song about basically, like it's a it's a song about like existential dread, but it does it does have like Pokemon references, but like it's not just like a dumb song. So yeah. I really really like Hold Hold Me Down. I think that's a, that's one of definitely one of the my favorite songs of all time, um, and it's a perfect like song to include on gcbsg because um without it you know echo is just kind of like blade side guy on that tape if if he if he didn't have the solo track so Mm -hmm. i definitely think i definitely think including that one was a good decision by whoever compiled that i I don't i don't know who did but definitely uh definitely you know many thanks to them because as i said i heard that at the same time as glue as glue and i was like wow this is crazy like this is really next level stuff so yeah yeah i completely agree and uh it's definitely i feel like that song pushed the legend of i mean this is an overstatement but i feel like it pushed like the legend of echo further like in dream Mm -hmm. circles where it's like as the years pass and the years pass and he and you know they still didn't drop an album like an official album you're just like i know it's gonna be like classic when it drops like either there's so much you know, potential and, and songwriting there and obviously the album yeah. delivered, but yeah, you know, that's a different topic. But yeah, that's I think that song is kind of like a, a jumping off point for like, man, when is this guy gonna because that song is essentially like it could almost be lost to time if it wasn't put on that compilation and gotten like a lot of fan notoriety. Yes. And that's I amazing agree. to think about. Yeah, because it's like even the fucking image uploaded to soundcloud is like so fucking low res i know it's on purpose because the the theme of the song but like it's just it's just so funny like to think that maybe he just posted that and was was like yeah people might like this but nah it's like crazy um and it's even more crazy might i add that they just let bleach got uh they just let bleach get deleted off soundcloud because they don't have soundcloud pro which is hilarious so like whenever they upload a new song or some of the, one of the old songs gets deleted and like they just didn't bother to re-upload it or anything like that, which I thought was hilarious. Um, so fans have been re-uploading them and stuff. Just that's just really that's just really funny to me from such a high caliber group. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I uh, support I their gonna... decision to not support SoundCloud. Fuck SoundCloud. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> definitely fair. That's <laughs> definitely fair. Yeah, Ab- absolutely. But, but they should pull that stuff on Spotify though. Yeah, or just put it so- put it like, somewhere like <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, something. Yeah, yeah, I got for sure. But I do think uh, I mean I was gonna uh, gonna you know, direct it to uh, to glue because I think that's a major, obviously major point. But Patrick, did you have any thought? I don't know how much how many songs you've heard off the compilation. Or... I have not heard very much off this, so I didn't really have much okay. to say. So I was gotcha. gonna sound like an asshole. So right. <laughs> no, no, no worries. I just wanted to kick it to you just in case. Um. I guess we could we could do glue. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that was before Tiger, technically, right? Chronologically. Yeah, no, it, it was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think Tiger was the second sort of project that that dropped from them yeah. officially. Okay. So glue, which is uh, on, if you know Chris on RYM, his one five star is this mixtape. So. <laughs> yeah, I do have I do have more stuff to rate, but I wouldn't give anything else a five at this moment in time. No, I I like to keep it. I like to keep it simple. All right. Yeah. Right. So the, mo- the most simple this yeah. is the, the one the one album so is this, <laughs> is this your favorite project of all time then <laughs> i mean I, I it it has to be yeah it's definitely my favorite blade project it's definitely my favorite album of the last deck of the 2010s um mm-hmm. it's yeah it's phenomenal it really is it 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 is just crazy i just like i i know the whole album back to back it's it's mental yeah no that de- definitely one that stayed with me over the years uh, revisit it every month at least I'd say uh, yeah yeah definitely my favorite yeah yeah I mean it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty incredible stuff it's not uh, it's funny I wouldn't even 
I don't I don't think I have it in my top three blade, but that's not a disservice to it because um, it's still really powerful. And I yeah. think the, it's definitely a transportive listen. Like the first time I heard it, it was definitely on like most things I had heard to that point. Um, I mean, I'm the only person who thinks that what I th- that I've met. So yeah, I think oh, interesting. Yeah, no, I thought, I, it, I thought it was no, 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 when when I was first listening to Drain stuff. I thought it was like one of like the two or three big like fan favorites. I, I might mean, have been wrong. Diehard fans, in the sense that like people who have actually been listening from the very beginning, would probably right. agree with me. But I don't know many of those people personally, um, mm-hmm. so that's probably mm-hmm. why. But no, it's def it's definitely like I think it's like it might be as highest rated project on RYM, for example. I'm not too sure. I think I think it is. Um, it's definitely it's, i think it might have been passed by ice dancer but yeah, yeah it has true. no no yeah. oh yeah because i ice dancer got bolded i forgot that yeah, yeah it that did was, yeah it did um, but glue glue i thought glue was bolded at one point but i i don't keep I, up i'm not i'm not sure but it definitely deserves it i'll tell you that but oh, for um, sure no i can i can understand why people enjoy um his subsequent stuff more for sure uh but yeah definitely holds a special place in my heart <clears throat> Right, right. And I, I think um the songs that really really hit me were um the the, the kind of like the last run. Um those were I think those were my favorite. I mean eBay is amazing, but um definitely like Everlasting Flame, uh you know, Freeze, Unreal, like those were probably my my favorite ones. Patrick, you said the last the well, last one of my favorites. It's it starts off like being more familiar with his most recent stuff and um, I keep getting these fucking names mixed up because I, I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, ever since, before I listened to this, then I started going backwards. Um, I, the first couple songs were a little more upbeat than I was used to from him, and then like the last songs felt like more closer, uh, more closer, closer to the sort of tempo, sort of mood. Like Everlasting Flame onward felt a lot closer to more recent stuff in terms of mood, just in terms of being like down tempo type shit. And I like those better, I would say. Um, although out of the first three, eBay was really cool. Like eBay was a good ass song. Like I mean, all of them are good songs. There's like no bad songs on here. But I think it mm. improves as it goes, and it definitely picks up with the sec- the third, the last Tie Boy song. So it was definitely. Yeah. Uh, what I would say is like I would say this is one of his more rap forward ones, and as far as that goes. As- that makes sense. And I think the working on dying collab is much better in that style. Although they do sound like pretty drastically different in a lot of ways. Yeah. 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 They do. To be fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I also, oh, go on. No, go on. No, I was going to say, I, I do. I, I kind of hear the, I get the, the rap forward stuff, like the, the more outwardly, like what you could easily categorize as rapping on this. Um, it's not as much line blurring. I do think that the production on this album, and I would also say on Ever Since, is like kind of the archetypal like production for for Drain Gang around this this time period. Um, and, or I guess maybe you know maybe you could say the 2013 stuff and and Glue instead. But I feel like that wintry sound is so evident on this. It's like yeah, and that's part of what makes it so transportive to, to me. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's definitely very wintry Everlasting Flames especially as you guys have both said that's definitely one of my favourites um, he literally talks about like snow landscapes and shit in that song so it definitely definitely right. takes me to and there's also a video for that on Vimeo I keep mentioning these <laughs> which is like super rare I think I think they're like next to some pylons or something something really weird like that but um, yeah. Yeah, shout out to Vimeo Flames. for not deleting shit, by the way. Vimeo, you'll find real old shit on there. Like, YouTube deletes its shit a lot. Vimeo rarely deletes stuff. Yeah, it's more of a... Yeah, it's like not a, a fucking Library of Alexandria situation over there. It's like actually... You can still find the Last Hazard remix on, uh, on Vimeo, I believe. It's the only streaming media that still has the Last Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. That's metal. Um, but, yeah, um, definitely... Definitely one of my favorite projects. Um, I, I, I'd, I'd also like to say that I'll, some people don't like Bones feature on um, Shadow mm-hmm. Face. But yeah, I, 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 I don't like that. That's the little interesting. I'm not a fan. I don't like Bones though. I'm not a fan of Bones, so that doesn't. Right. Um, but I mean that's understandable. Um, I'm definitely I'm 
I'm a fan of Bones. I wouldn't say he's one of my favorite artists, but um, I definitely have enjoyed some of his music. I, I really like what he did on on that song. I don't know why. It's just very smooth. Very, definitely fits the vibe of the song. It's a shame that's the only one they ever made. But and that's, think, that was out. yeah, that was going to be my my uh, my point because they came up around the same time frame, and and Bones is uh, there are people who are you know in underground. Uh, circles at least on the internet who really uh cite that whole camp the whole like was it sesh uh, camp as like a big influencer i mean we even had a i'm, I'm referring to this we even had a comment on our cloud rap episode talked about you guys should have talked about them more um and i never saw them as like super influential but and it's interesting that this collab happened because it's kind of like a, mm-hmm. a collision of of two of <coughs> two adjacent but similar like you know uh, worlds yeah um well the the lean bones collab came out first i think so maybe they met mm-hmm. through that i'm not too sure but it's a shame like i said that we didn't get more of that but that's that's just how soundcloud rappers act isn't it so <laughs> yeah right. but well, i mean hopefully crazy. it wasn't due to like i mean a b for anything i don't, I, um, I would hope not <laughs> appar- apparently it was i i heard i read that it was something to do with their girlfriends not liking each other or something like oh, there you some go. Some yeah, that shit. Right. <laughs> it, it was something dumb like that yeah so what so i heard i don't know if that's actually true but it's generally that, um, or somebody's a sex pest, or a sex predator, or there's somebody's a sex <laughs> fix. Like, it's yeah. always just dumb shit. It's never, like, you know, like, it's never even anything worth writing a fucking song about at this point. It's always just some yes. trail text messages or fucking deleted tweets. It's never even fucking interesting at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, when it comes to... This cloud. This year was also the year that uh, Into Dust came out, right? Yes. Which is Fantastic. Uh, which I remember seeing as your profile picture for a while, and it's also one of my favorite, one of my favorite Blade songs, like one of my favorite cloud rap songs. Period. It's an incredible. That beat is an unreal beat. Like just the way it comes oh, in, the way it comes in, and it hits the first time uh, after those like you know ascending notes. Uh, it's. It's pretty nuts. I'm, I'm always I'm always here for that song. I always have time for that song. Um, I, th- I, lo- I, think, uh, I love what he does vocally on it, too. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it's like, that was like, that was him really um, stretching his vocals to the limits, I think, but in a good way. Um, he was really singing on that one. And um, definitely one of my favorite videos, uh, which is why I had that as my pitch. I just thought that was, I just do think that shit was so cool, you know? Bit of a bit of a Jeff the Killer moment, really, but definitely still cool uh, with the sunglasses and the fake blood or real blood. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I mean, we... it was definitely awesome. Uh, my only gripe with Into Dust is that the Spotify version is remastered and it's not as good. It's not as good. Yeah, as the uh, as the they yeah. changed a few very subtle things about the vocal harmonies, and I just wasn't fucking with that. But still a fantastic song, yeah. Yeah, the the way he like manages to stretch like um, what's the lyric like? I I can't feel anything inside or something like that. The way that like he's stretched. I can't feel anything inside. Yeah, um, yeah. The way he I stretches, couldn't really just told me why. You told me yeah. why, right? Yeah, uh, the way he, like, he the, his vocals are during that whole run of like that verse before the end of the song is uh is pretty pretty powerful stuff. Definitely, I uh, I think that was probably his biggest song until Who Goes There came out. Um, and then Who Goes There was his biggest song till, till Be Nice To Me came out and right, so on and so right, forth. Right. Um, because that was that was a really like that was a really big song at the time, I remember. That was like his his Kyoto, really, I'd I'd say mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, but looking back now it's like infinitesimal compared to what he's done since, but definitely one of his most iconic tracks for sure. Yeah, even down to the video, it feels like it's in a part of a much, much different time period and era. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't make that now. Well, he, I mean, he would, but he wouldn't yeah. have the blood on his hands. It'd be yeah. like, I don't even know. It'd be so weird. <laughs> He'd also have a cross on us. Right. I didn't listen to this, so I have nothing to add <laughs> except for two things. One, I wonder if naming it Into Dust is a Mazzy Star reference, which leads me to thinking that more rappers in the cloud rap scene should like, use like Mazzy Star samples. I don't know why. Yeah, not. he's definitely. They've definitely listened to like Cocktooth Twins or something. I feel like 
definitely called two chickens. Yeah. I mean, rappers um, love fucking yeah. Portishead. They love Portishead samples. Hus Kingpin just made a whole album about like Portishead samples. It wasn't great. It was fine. It <laughs> has really regrettable sex lines on it and shit. But, yeah. <laughs> but if rappers, like, there's a really no, good they... lens tape that does it with uh, Portishead stuff. So, yeah, like, uh, Hope Sandoval's voice isn't that far off Beth Gibbons in a lot of ways, so there should be a lot more beats made out of poor, um, Mazzy Star samples. The second thing is that we should have had Diction on to read the five star review because it's in French and it's long. Oh, in French, yeah, <laughs> in French. I didn't know that. Well, he probably wouldn't. He probably wouldn't. He probably wouldn't agree that the drums aren't strong enough. So uh, I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. No, I, I, don't want know if read, I want him to read it in French and then react <laughs> to it in English. Like listen to the song and then read the review in French and then like disagree <laughs> with it in English. That would be great for you but, our, our multilingual, our multilingual uh, uh, partner in crime. It can be a bilingual podcast like the dollop. So yeah, reach out to that French audience. Yeah. Can, we can re- reach out to like Albertan separatists or something. But <laughs> if everybody in Quebec listen to us, uh, Untapped Market, sure. Um, I have not heard this. I didn't know to listen to the singles. This sounds awesome, though. I just put it. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna listen to it. Yeah, I'd highly of, recommend it. Yeah, I think it's one of the the common uh, uh, fan fan favorites. I, I believe so. Yeah, it's a uh, for sure. Yeah, it's it's an, it's definitely an amazing song, and, and one of my I would put it in like a top five Blade song if someone asked me to make a list. So, um, I guess we should do Tiger. Yeah, Tiger. God, what a tape! What a, what an underrated tape. This what is. a fucking great yes. album. This was the first one out of this project that I loved. This shit was great. Oh, it blew me away. Okay. Yeah. I, Interesting. Everybody seems surprised by this. Yeah, no. I thought this was amazing. Like, I listened to this three times the first time I heard it. Jeez. Well, fair play. Nah. I mean, that's great, because I think it's very... Um, underrated and i think now that legendary members come out i think people have all but forgot about this one from what i've gathered which is a right. shame because it really did you know it really it really did put down that you who wasn't pushing like it's even more futuristic sound even this year uh mm-hmm. it's doing some crazy stuff tiger yeah but um i did think it was funny that the song tiger is not I don't really know what that was but that's yeah that was that was always confusing to me <laughs> Yeah, I um, it's, it tape was kind of uh, was, I mean, it's really it feels more out there than some of their other stuff. I mean, you talk about like mm. how there, there, there was a review on this site. I'm forgetting to uh, to pull it up right now, so I'm doing it a disservice. But there was a, there was a review that I really wanted to read because while it was probably made partly in jest, I do think that it was actually uh, accurate. Let me pull it up um but yeah it's definitely like a super it feels almost uh there's there's a witch house subgenre and i don't i don't necessarily disagree with it Uh, no i I think i think i think that's right especially on songs like um oh i don't know which one would i which ones would i say a witch house primarily i don't even know um maybe maybe van um definitely a couple tracks on that yeah yeah i mean i think um there's a the hit is the, the review is rap hits made by a depressed narcoleptic cyborg that's in love with a girl who's addicted to uppers. <laughs> I, I see nothing to disagree with there. <laughs> no, I'm voting that. It kind of makes sense. It really does. <laughs> it's a four and a half star no, review, it, so clearly it, that's an improving <laughs> appraisal. Like yeah. this kind of reminds me a little bit of like, um, do you guys know Night Jewel at all? Uh, I can't say I do. Can't say I do. Mm. Yeah, a little bit of that. They're like cold, like it's cold in a different way than a lot of other Drain Gang stuff, I would say. Mm-hmm. And I think Witch, Witch House is kind of is definitely an appropriate secondary on this. Um, it's at the it's atmospheric, I would say. Like it definitely prioritizes atmosphere. After the first two tracks, by the way, Diamonds is addictive as hell. I think Diamonds yeah. is probably my favorite. Young Lean, anything. I will have that hook stuck in my head all fucking day. Oh, uh, it's so uh, yeah, it's brilliant. yeah. That's a great song. Uh, I think Diamonds and um, and Shadow Silence were 
for my Shadow of Silence is definitely Witch House. There's no doubt in my mind. Shadow of Silence is for sure Witch House. And I think um yeah, no, definitely. He was I mean that's all this is all white armor, unlike glue, which had a few different producers, so makes a lot of sense why it's more cohesive and stuff. Which it is. Definitely. There was a uh I think there was a good production credit too toward the end. Or it's is that just... it may be a co or it might just be I actually, I believed this was all white armor, but I could be. It it he may be. Uh, it says additional on the page. Oh, okay. So he probably had added right. somewhere, but he was not a primary producer credit on anything. Okay. Yeah. No, because this this was the first all white armor um, tape anyone did, which is interesting. Really, did this predate this, um, any of Blade's tapes only with white armor? Um, and I agree about diamonds. And I remember when the vid- when the video for that came out, I was so fucking hyped. When they're in the snow it is so cool, um, and I also think I just think I don't know, man. Like his hooks are so good on this, like especially like he's the songwriting was mental on this album. Um, yeah, the songwriting is air fucking tight. That's yeah. Another thing I there's get not a bad, it's not a wasted second on this. No, no, yeah. definitely he knew what he was doing with this one. He delivered it. This sounds like it was made like all in the same. St- time span very con- concisely he just banged them out that, that's what it sounds like to me um and right. yeah this is, this is a lot definitely. of the blade tapes with the exception of working on dying uh kind of have a feeling where they were taken from a few different sessions a few big ideas coalescing this feels like it was one session one whole <laughs> like connected thesis yes and- i agree and, definitely and I, feel like I, I feel like diamonds is the one track that kind of like breaks the sound a little but it's still overall within the aesthetic but it just feels a little bit heavier than everything else everything else is in kind of like a lighter more ethereal space um what it kind of reminds me of is what ag cook tried to do with uh, the sugar the sugar roast guy a little Uh bit but not it's i mean this is so much better i don't know yes this is I, I see this. This is the sort of thing that could probably end up being my favorite. Right now, my favorite is like, and I'm going to tell my hand here right now, Ice Dancer. But this is second favorite, and it could become my favorite with time if it ages this well because I keep wanting to listen to it. Like, I feel like this is one of those albums where it's just hooks on hooks. Every line could be my new favorite hook within each passing day. The songs are so well constructed. The whole chilly aesthetic comes across perfectly. There's not a second I would change on it. Really fucking like this, obviously. So. Yeah. No, well, I'm very pleased to hear that. It's good to hear that from someone who's a uh, fairly recent, fairly new to the the whole thing. Really, it's quite interesting that this was an immediate favorite for you. That's cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, because this has been long, um, okay, been reclaimed recently as like you know a super underrated project. But you know, I've heard the next one's not that good. I've not heard the next one. I've heard the Lord of the Jewels. Oh. Well, we'll get to that one, right? Is that on the list? Yeah, no, that'll be part yeah. two. I've heard, I heard to like lower my expectations for that, though. I, I'll save I my thoughts. I have for not that. listened to it yet. Yeah, I, I'll save, I'll save my After thoughts that, for that. That fits within the time frame for this. I just didn't listen to it, but we can listen to it for the next one because it says oh, twenty fifteen. Yeah. But I just yeah, it was a twenty fifteen tape. I, I've heard it. Uh, it. It's all, it's all right. I mean, I guess we might as well touch on it now since Patrick, when Pat, I guess well, Patrick can yeah. read up on it next one. It's like but, fine. It's, it's fine, yeah. It, I don't think it's a bad tape. I, I just don't think it reaches the heights of the. Um, yeah, there's a black you know, crazy on it. Uh, yeah, crazy. I mean, it's got it's got a um, it's got the usual suspects like on it, um, you know, from from the group, and obviously Craig. That's a drill primary. That's interesting. And a I, boss secondary. Wait, who, wait a minute. Oh. A few of the songs are drill. I I think to call it a drill project would be stretching it slightly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's all... not like it's not like Rip Blade, which we'll get to, which is like a shout out to a uh, battered sphinx who always yells at me for not voting on genres. Like that really makes him mad that I never vote on. <laughs> as long as you don't comment any of the genre comment boxes, those are just the worst. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah, that's the worst part of the website. That's worse yeah. than comment boxes, right? Because at least the comment boxes you're talking about the project. If you're talking, if you're commenting in genre tag comment boxes, you need to touch grass like it's, <laughs> it's oh, no, pretty... there's like such a lack of humor there like comment boxes it's bad humor and genre comments it's no humor humor yeah. is discouraged no no you'll get kicked out um i i really i, I really like the uh 
the song Don't Dance on the that Thai Boy project mm. or the Jewels. Don't Dance is fire. Um Blade's feature is pretty run of the mill. It's not amazing, but it's definitely a very classy song. Um and I think from there on it gets a lot better. I'd say the first three songs generally don't do a lot for me. Yeah. Especially the Adam Killer collab. That's a disappointing start. Yeah. Um Katie Cutthroat did all the beats and they're a little bit of a hit and miss producer, so I think I mean he clearly doesn't like this that much because it's not even on streaming services. Um so it's definitely one of the lost ones. It's the only yeah. one that's not streaming services, actually. So yeah. not that about it. Um, yeah, I think I heard it on SoundCloud, but that was the only thing I heard it on. Um, yeah. And the the, the 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 lean track is solid. Um yeah. one one hundred and eighty dollars, I guess that song's called. Yeah. Is, that's my favorite. That one's very infectious. <laughs> um but yeah, it, it's definitely not on par with Tiger. Um, I do like the cover, though. The Akira homage is very awesome. Yes, but, yeah. Um, good, uh, good. But not one of his best, no. Definitely not one of his best. Not as good as, certainly not as good as Legendary Member, for sure. No, no. no. It's definitely, I think it's definitely looked at as one of the quote-unquote like lesser projects from the guys in general. Yeah. Um, you know, certainly not a bad project by any means, you know. I, um, I don't want to sound negative, because I do, I would say I like probably you know from track four down so that's 60 yeah. like 60 percent of the songs but uh it does open on a little bit of a mediocre note but definitely sure. picks up on uh, the second half is is strong it's just clearly like tie boy has two other projects that are pretty awesome and then there's yeah. like this one you know so it's interesting how that worked he also has like so he also has like loose singles produced by katie that are way better than anything on that like g6 for example was a fantastic yeah. song and that never made it to a tape. Um, oh, what's the what's the one that samples Coldplay? What's that one called? Uh, oh, shit. Um, uh, it's it's sampled Magic by Coldplay. What is it? What's that song called? Whatever that song's called is it's the one. Fantastic. It's got um. Doesn't that one have? Is that is that is that a Blade collab? No, it's just a solo song. Um, I think. No, it is. Yeah. Um, oh, I might be thinking. Oh, of I don't. I don't remember. But it's it's um. There's be- there's better material with Katie Cutthroat by him than that tape. So yeah, but uh, that applies to a lot of his loose stuff actually. His a lot of his singles are like songs a lot of people will never hear because they're just not like readily available like that, which is a shame because he's got a lot of great singles um, that I could go on about for ages actually. But yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. Um, yeah, I would yeah. say that overall. It's like a pretty decent tape, but it's not something that I would like ever reach for. No, no, I agree with that. Yeah, there's there's so much good material made by these guys that like that would be pretty far <laughs> down, far down the list of like stuff to reach for. But definitely yeah. give it give it a listen if you're like a completionist and if you're interested in Tie Boy and because there are yes. obviously worthwhile. You know, it's not bad at all. It, I would say it's more more good than not. But um, when his other two projects are so high quality, just being like a run of the mill, like pretty good project is not, you know, the same. Mm. But yeah, that's my overall thoughts on that. I guess that would take us to, oh, we're in 2015 now. So we're looking at, uh, well, I guess 2015 didn't have much in the realm of projects. I don't think there was any. Yeah. No, so oh, well, be, except would, Lord of Jolts. Yeah. Right. So would, is um, Ripley, is Rip Blade before ever since or what? R.I.P. Blade, so, is, like, all those songs already existed when that came out. And it's also only on Spotify, which I only discovered recently. It's not on Apple Music, weirdly. Right. Um, it, I guess we all those talk- songs already came out in 2015 and 16. So, like, Psycho dropped in 2015. Um, MJ dropped, I think, late 2015. So on and so forth. Uh, um, and I think some people thought that was unofficial at first because it just randomly appeared on Spotify one day, but... I guess it must have been an official tape because it's still up to this day. Um, but yeah, that's like really early 2016, I think. It's before... Oh, no, actually, no. Maybe it's after ever since. It could be. I'm not too sure. Well, I guess we could talk about it regardless because it's like the EP and you know, ever since was the big album. So I guess if we want yeah. to talk about it, it now. It's a great collection of songs. I wish you'd do this again because like um, there's so many songs that aren't on Spotify that could be if he just collected them like this. Um and you know, Seven Eleven definitely one of his better sad songs. Uh, yeah, Butterfly is just a banger. 
Yeah. DJ Ken production as well. Like you can't beat that. Um, and the lean songs, I'm a little lukewarm on still to this day on both of them, but I I can appreciate them for sure. Um, <laughs> It it, it it was definitely a cool move to do that and like I said I just wish like maybe we could get like a 2013 14 version of that for streaming services but you know just just a thought <laughs> just a thought that would definitely be cool but it, it's a cool little project but I don't think it was ever intended to be like a major like part of his discography right. or anything like that I feel like the hooks are really sticky and in a strange way on that I mm. mean the MJ hook is like gold but it's very very catchy yeah, yeah. But I just mean like the uh, and the psycho the psycho hook is very funny. It's not. I mean, it's a great hook, but it's not really something that you could just like. I'm a psycho today. Like I'm yeah, only like, walking around singing that today. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it's like when I go around work saying when I'm listening to a whole lot of red. When I go to sleep, I dream about red. It does not work. <laughs> yeah, um, and like the, the obviously like the. The fifty sack in my sock, like uh, great. That's great. such a fun, That's also a funny hook to me because it's, he says it, it so dryly hook. the first time. I know, He's like I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't <laughs> give a fuck. Yeah, it's just so funny. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, that Lean and Blade did those because I felt like I don't think they had a lot of collabs uh, after, like you know, in like the unknown memory time period. Um, so it was nice to see them work on two songs that were, uh, you know, they're both bangers, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, and definitely cool to see their chemistry work out. I remember around the time those dropped, I was like, okay, well, these two are definitely coming out with a tape, right? Because, like, it just makes sense. But we've still not got one to this day. Kind of mental, but, yeah. Yeah, I think there's an argument for this to be, like, his most consistent project in a way. Yeah. Where, I mean, you know, from a sonic standpoint, I think the songs are pretty similar to each other in terms of quality. Um, like, I love the project. I think it's great. And I think it's cool that he did a sound like this um, at the time when it was decidedly different from, you know, oh, some of what had been before. Definitely way different than Glue. Oh, yeah. Um, for sure. So, yeah, I, I, I think I agree with pretty much there's an synopsis. Like, it's just kind of like bangers you know back to back it minimizes like the uh a dumb killer feature which is always a good thing well not always but most, <laughs> most, most sometimes a good thing uh, it's usually a good thing yeah yeah in this case <laughs> um yeah, that's yeah, I, I, me into my one point because i did not listen to this unfortunately i didn't know there were eps we were also supposed to listen to i missed this i will listen to it though because it does sound good was that if I didn't know anything about Drain Gag and I saw these artists' names and these song titles, I would think this was Juggalo affiliated. <laughs> and, and the album cover? <laughs> and the album yeah, cover, yeah. The was album so art funny. Is with Adam and Killa, Young yeah. Lean, and, you know, 7 Eleven, 50 Sack in My Sock, I Don't Give a Fuck, Psycho. Yeah. Yeah, this, those yeah. duels. I, get, I get what you're crazy. saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one is way more of a drill project than Lord of the Jewels to me. Yeah. Like almost all the beats are drill beats. Really. Yeah, um, definitely Butterfly is just, that's just a straight drill beat. It's probably uh, it's, it's definitely like Kenner. the it's probably the quote unquote like hardest beats he's gone over. Like yeah, yeah, I, I'd say so. Um, yeah. The only song I can think of that's that hard is Cover Up. Is I guess uh, definitely his hardest stuff. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's definitely like. Um, Rip Blade and to a lesser extent the working on dying stuff like with the tread stuff is like the, the quote, like harder beats that he goes over right yeah yeah, yeah. definitely um, we won't ever hear anything like that from him again most likely now but still very cool yeah. to Prob- probably probably not it's even when he does it now I mean this is not official but like Sleepwalk to the Jeweler like it's more melodic and you know yeah. it, it's it's not as like hard hitting while still being an amazing song but yeah, um, and I guess we could do AVP before ever since because this is, I think, commonly cited as one of like the weaker ones too. Um, um, yeah, it definitely is, and it's pretty is, good. Is, I've seen some re- reclamation for it. I think it's pretty good. It's good in the sense that it's Blade and Tireboy who rarely miss together, um, yeah. and there's only a couple duds in my opinion, um, but it's quite clearly just a bunch of songs just slapped together. 
Um, Blade himself said some of those are from like 2014 and stuff. So like they're not there. It's definitely just like, yeah. you know, we want to get these songs out there. The cover is awesome though. Really awesome. Um, that's, that's the white second. armor, white armor beats are fantastic. Um, it's a good, it's another nice little project, but yeah, yeah. Again, I, I wouldn't be like rushing to listen to this much of the time. Yeah. I feel like Broke Boy is like the standout. You know? That's 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 great, mostly because of Echo, really. But yeah, it's yeah, um, it's. I like Bla- I like Blade's hook on that too. It's a great song. My favorite would be. Um, um, I like One Million a lot, but I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, oh no, probably winter actually is my favorite. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's a good, it's good shit. Um, yeah, it's it's good. It's pretty. It's another like pretty consistent. I get there's like one or two songs that I'm not as high on as the others, but I only listened to it probably like twice, and I just picked out a, some songs from it because it's pretty short. Um, yeah, it's it's a very concise listen. Um, yeah. I think it's like twenty twenty minutes long or something. It's like a very very quick it feels, and easy listen. It feels a little stop gappy, which makes sense because they basically confirm that it's just a bunch of songs. Um, yeah, I, I think they just wanted to get someone else out there, really. Um, but they were they were they dropped a lot in 2016, really overall. Like, and obviously, ever, ever since was the biggest uh, dream project yet, easily. So uh, yeah, it, it was a it was a really good year for them. 2016 that was definitely their biggest year to date because 2015 was just a lot of singles, really. Um, most of which, again, will never even be heard by a lot of fans because they're just only SoundCloud uh, tracks. But in 2016, they were going hard with like the streaming drops, and yeah, that was that was really cool to see. Definitely the beginning of their of their evolution, which is why I said before I consider ever since like their second major era, I guess. Well, it feels like for sure way more polished than anything I've heard up to this point, including Tiger. Even though it feels like less, slightly less of a cohesive statement, it definitely feels like there's, as opposed to Tiger, where there's no skips, there's stuff on here I could lose. It feels a little less like an overall strong statement, but I feel like it's definitely constructed for somebody who hadn't heard these guys before. I kind of feel like it's put together in a way that emphasizes aspects of their previous songwriting, but in like a strong definitely poppier direction yeah yeah definitely poppier um still in search of sunshine on on that tape is definitely one of the poppier songs um i was uh, talking about ever since i was talking about ever since oh sorry right oh yeah no we're on ever since now cool Mm, i agree i also agree then because um because love note and fucking i mean basically every song on that despite being how about quite bleak subjects at times? Yeah. Um, Especially on the second all... half. Fucking Wrist Cry. That's up there with us with Switchblades like by Lil Peep as a song that you want to sing. Again, it's like singing to yourself a song, but you don't want other people to hear you singing it. It's like, this is so <laughs> catchy, but it's like, people are going to worry about me or look at me funny. <laughs> In it, yeah, yeah. It's really disgusting with um, Optimal about how I thought that this project would lead to people looking at me less funny than when I had to do when I binged insane clown posse at work and I had clown like problematic clown rap blaring out of my headphones. And occasionally <laughs> you would sing it back to yourself just in like, you know, by habit or whatever. I'm like, oh, this won't be so bad. I don't know. Some of this stuff, little little down, a yeah. little, little depressing, <laughs> little little like people hear you singing that to yourself. You're just singing it because it's catchy. They might think that you they would take a few steps back, ask you how yeah. you're doing. His, and, yeah. Uh, his, his, Patrick's co worker is like, Why sing Risk Cry a hundred times? What the <laughs> fuck is this going on here? <laughs> there's, a, there's a number of, uh, which is, you know, part of the fandom and everything. There's a number of like drainer memes where it's like, you know, hey, like, you know, it's like the, the the stick figure guys or whatever being like, hey, like, you know, come over. And it's like his the girl comes over and then and it's like it's, it basically is like, hey, you want to have sex? And it's no, he's just playing risk cry a hundred times. He's like crying. <laughs> I've seen a number of variations of those kind of memes where it's like. <laughs> I know we said we were going to do warehouse chat, but this doesn't really apply to my current state at work. But we used to have it where they were trying to up the morale by having people put their own playlists in on playlist on at work and i always used to tell everybody on the internet that if i was going to quit i would put on i will by danny brown 
But uh, I think my new plan would be I would try and bum everybody out at the beginning of the day by doing a drain playlist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> straight Everyone else just quits, too. And see yeah. how well I could tank the production numbers. <laughs> It would be almost. It would be actually worse than Danny Brown's weird voice. <laughs> it would. It would be worse than the pussy on my beard shit. It definitely would be worse than that. They definitely be, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Oh god, that would be. That would be funny. I, I think, it, it's a bummer album, isn't it? Like it, it's a bummer. it really is. Um, comp- especially compared to Glue, which is like which is like weird, but it's not like mostly not depressing, but. Ever since his, I mean, yeah, it's it's bleak. It's, it's very, very bleak. It's the bleakest he's ever been. And it's actually very cool that he completely did a 180 on that in recent years. Um, and now mostly makes very positive sounding music. Uh, and, I and think, I'm, you know, good good for him, really. Is what I'd say. That was the, and I don't want to, this is obviously to say nothing of Blade uh, and how he was, what he was going through at the time. But that was, this sound and this whole thing um, and what he was going for ever since, and then what shone through on ever since, clearly, because we're talking about it, was kind of shoehorned in as like, oh, this is just like their, the train aesthetic now. Like, this is their aesthetic. Because I feel like when I came to them, that was what I was expecting. Because that's what I had heard. Mm. And so I feel like that's like, it has now become a misconception because they've altered again. But I feel like that was a, the big, like, um, like, oh, they're sad. And like, in their, it's like, a bunch of you know people that are sad from Scandinavia or whatever. Like that was the what I had heard going into it, really. And and it, like I thought the the winteriness and stuff was going to be consistent throughout, but really that was just overstated based on like a few projects. I feel like yeah, for sure. This being the the biggest example of, and I guess it makes sense because at the time when I had hopped into drinking, ever since was still their biggest one. Ice Dancer was like just taking off. Mm. So, I guess it makes sense that that was like my misconception, but that was yeah. the background. Well, I, had I think an element of that is the, you know, reflexive criticism that they're kind of committif- com- committify. I'm pronouncing the word wrong, like committifying sadness that peep got mm-hmm. a little bit that they're like just taking sadness and making it an aesthetic. And mm-hmm. uh, I think that's just like a natural reaction from people when like your music is overwhelmingly like, you know, when sadness is the prevailing emotion on something, especially in genres where sadness is not like the dominant thing you hear about. That Very true. Some sort of gimmick. Right. And they're not, they're not people, making a Midwest emo album. Like, right. So yeah. And if you made like a happy Midwest, like a power, like a Midwest emo album with like, you know, happy lyrical themes or like power pop choruses, people would think that's a gimmick too. Mm. Cause out because it's out of joint with what people expect from the genre, so people reflexively just call it a gimmick. Uh, yeah, no, um, that must be the case to an extent. But p- people should be used to this by now because, like, Kid Cudi's been around for over a decade now, and that's what his entire career has been based on, really. Um, yeah. But I guess with people like Blade, people just love to shit on, like, I don't know. They just they love to. They well, love that's to downplay racism because he's like Swedish and it's goofy. Like <laughs> that's, that, that's what that is. Right. Like that, there's like an extra layer of oh, he has a funny name. He's not just a right. white dude doing rap. He's the whitest white dude doing rap. Right. <laughs> like, this isn't just Action yeah. Bronson. This is like right. Like Casper the Friendly Ghost doing like Frank Ocean <laughs> on Xanax. Like people yeah. just find yeah. that they can clown the shit out of this on its face. Yeah. Yeah. No, see, yeah, because no. Action Bronson sounds like where he's from. You know what I mean? Like, yes, well, you yes. could argue he, you could argue he sounds like someone else too, but that's a whole other. But oh, he sounds God. like where he's where he's from, and it it makes you know, you, can, you can picture it in your head. Versus, you know, uh, Blade is very different. I feel like Grime gets this a lot in the states too, where it's like, oh, the funny the, those British rappers, like they're so cute with their funny accents. It's like, oh, these yeah. guys have been through a lot of fucking shit. Like, you don't know anything about them. Uh, yeah, definitely, I agree with that. Yeah, the, mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I feel sure. all the time, even today, Grimes still gets like clowned on a little bit by like you know your average like rap fan, which is kind of frustrating. <laughs> well, yeah. that's their choice, and it they, they want to be ignorant like that, you know, it's cool. Let them let them rock. <laughs> <It's not good. laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a it's an inevitability, probably. Sadly, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, no, definitely, but. Definitely the the thing uh, the thing about um, commodifying um, sadness as an aesthetic and all that shit. Yeah, definitely is what people were saying at the time. 
Um, I don't think anybody could argue that now because, um, well, pretty much after Red Light, really, um, things really took a more uh, light, not light-hearted, but, you know, I mean, he's basically a Christian rapper now, right? So, I mean, it's like he's done a, he's done a total 180 on everything. Um, and that's that's really cool. I'm, like, really happy about that, um, him as a person. Um, uh, yeah. But ever since, it's definitely an interesting artifact. You know, it's like this is the peak of this sound and it's definitely the best example that you could show somebody like it's probably the yeah. blade album i would suggest to somebody if they were just starting to listen to him uh, mm -hmm. i don't know if you guys would agree but that's what i'd say definitely it, it would be one of it would be one of mine uh I, I would probably i would put it i would put it top uh like in, in the first two or three uh, i think yeah. it would be in my top it would be up there. The thing about it is, I don't want. I think it might give them too narrow an impression of their sound. Mm, like, maybe actually. Yeah. I feel like I feel like if you're going for this sort of mood, Tiger hits this sort of mood. This is more melodramatic and direct than Tiger, but yet less focused yeah. in a way because there are songs on here that have lesser songwriting and like the middle <laughs> third. Like the middle third is not as strong. Like it finishes amazingly strong. The last couple of songs on here are fucking ridiculous. Yeah, sick. It's crazy. And, and it, it opens with, I mean, can we just spend two, like, a couple minutes on how good Who Goes There is? Cause, like, oh, no, that's an incredible, incredible fucking opener. Yeah, it's a fantastic. It's one of the best album openers of all time. Right. The way the the way that, like, the, the bass line comes in, like, in the background, um, before that first drop, and then when it drops, it totally, like, earns that payoff. Like, it's such a fucking incredible fucking song and yeah i the the lyrics are so sad and and so but also like just like feels like an anthem at the same time yeah like he said he finds touch and disgusting i mean yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which of course is like a, a big uh has been a, a drain meme for yeah as, um, it's hilarious in the community yeah. um but yeah i really I really, really love uh, that fucking song, man. That be and just like the whole, the concept, just like feeling alone. Like I mean, that that is such an isolated song. I mean, just like mm -hmm. you know, it's not me. Like I'm a loner. You know, I'm not, like who holds her. It's not me. I'm a loner. Like you know, I'm yeah. a stoner. I enjoy when the world moves slower. The the hook is just. I mean, it's one, oh, it's fun. one it's of the best things. It's so quotable. Yeah, it's one of the best things he's he's written. I think. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. See, I yeah. feel like the thing is that they don't make they don't commodify sadness so much as they express universal emotions in a way that makes for addictive music. And so people take it as the fact that they're able to do that so effortlessly, Blade in particular, that it's made to be like, oh, he's just like, because it comes so naturally to him to turn this into art, that it must be just commercialized, you know, it must be cynical, it must be something to put on. But no, that's just, you know just as easily as power pop musicians have their influences. This is his influence to me just because he's able, because that's the thing about the song is that it's incredibly fucking catchy in that. You know, I'm on, like, I'm not going to try and sing it. I want to sound way worse than he does, but that whole part <laughs> has like six or seven different lines that will get stuck in your head, just rhyming the same, you know, end suffix part. And it's just the construct of the songwriting happens to like the lyrical content of that happens to be about incredibly sad things that are relatable mm -hmm. and that's the genius of it yeah. what's this uh, uh, every friday is halloween like uh <laughs> there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of like um I, I like the yeah, the autumnal imagery is very cool um he probably yeah. watched a lot of horror movies before he made that song that's my guess. Yeah, uh, I mean the whole the whole thing is is like like almost every song on the album has a lyric about like slitting something or blood coming out of something, and I think like I think like it's very morbid. Like so, even so, what is very fucking morbid? Uh, mm -hmm. Blood Veil Stillborn has some ridiculous lyric about some shit like what the this lights this sword is my I don't even know something about swords. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, and Love Note, which is I would say oh is my, my favorite song. Yeah, I think that's the beat on that is fucking perfect. The, yeah, the drop on that shit is insane. Like the me that that might again, be like white armor is like that's white armor, right? I assume. Yeah, no, the whole the whole thing the again whole is, thing white, is, that, is white armor. Yeah, that that might be. That's got to be white armor. I mean, that's the top 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 tier white armor. Yeah, which means it's, it's one of the best beats ever. So. <laughs> 
sugar Just is unrelated to what you guys too. were saying. Unrelated to what you guys were saying, but I'm reading Sophia's review and kind of related because you were talking about the imagery and the lyrics. One of the things that works about this is that it's so lyrically direct and dramatic, but his vocals are so intentionally distorted, which kind of mm. gives it a lot of its power because these are very dramatic images in a lot of these songs, but he sounds yeah. very distant, increasingly so. Yeah, I agree. Um, missing person is a good example of that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he's talking about feeling disconnected from the world and and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. when he sings that, I want to know what love is part as well. That's fun. That's I still think that's genius to this day. Um, but he's singing about that in a very like flat tone. Like it's almost like he doesn't care. It sounds like he doesn't care. And I think that's uh, that's definitely part of the of the feel of the album. You know, like I, I'm a missing person, but like like. Is he ambivalent towards that? It's. I mean, you could you could go on about that for ages. To be fair, yeah. He intended to put across on the album. It's it, it's almost almost like a concept album push. It's very it sticks very closely to one um, lyrical theme. And when Skin, you know, which is absolutely absolutely beautiful song, uh, when Skin closes the album out, you can you kind of just set there like, damn, okay, well, I feel hollow. But I mean, it's uh, it, it's definitely an experience. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of his best albums for sure. But as uh, as Pat rightfully says, the uh, the middle stretch is not too good. Um, I'd say it gets a lot better after Bloodville Stillborn again. Um, that's kind that's kind of the uh, that's kind of the best stretch of the album, I think overall. But yeah, it's it's a great it's a great project. Definitely a great project. Right. If you just cut from Missing Person to Blood Veil Stillborn, then it's just as good, if not better, than Tiger. And it's a perfect introduction to him. Again, I feel like this was deliberately constructed as an introduction for new listeners. Like it feels more like hot. The budget feels higher. The songs feel more ambitious. It feels mm. like it's aiming at saying something grander. The imagery is a lot more of uh, just, again, written on just a grander scale like it's more vivid like it just feels like it's reaching out to more of an audience than previously i feel yeah definitely um it's weird to call it accessible but it is in comparison to all the previous stuff um it's yeah, accessible it's, to the audience that's going to listen to it like he knows this isn't for everybody like in terms of like top 40 radio but in terms of people who want to connect to this he's trying to reach as many of them as possible yeah, um, and I think that works because a lot of his fan base started around ever since. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I, I think that's what they what they got used to very quickly with ever since followed by Red Light two years later. Um, I yeah, think that's I, what they got used to very quickly. I feel like ever since had the uh, is when he started getting like a little bit of notoriety from like publications and stuff, but it wasn't. It still wasn't like you know. I wouldn't say it was positive yet. No, it wasn't. Uh, People did not like Blade in 2016. Like it was uh, being a Blade fan in 2016 was like being a Young Thug fan in 2014. I'd say yeah. it was kind of like, like it was like, do you like this person as a joke? sort of deal yeah it or, or yeah it, it was it was like it was like when people you know people had to defend like a little b back in the day it's like but it's a joke isn't it it's like no you can look up my old gucci mixtape reviews from like 2012 and 13 to see my early opinions on young thug and they do not age well like you know, <laughs> i think i've read some of those i believe i've <laughs> i've spent a lot of time reading your reviews i believe i've seen one of those um, yeah, but like one or two where I'm just like, what the fuck is going on with this guy? Like, what what is his gimmick? I don't understand. I, I come across very old and out of touch and just completely missed the boat on him for quite a while. There's even one or two reviews where I say shit about future, where that uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, sacrilege. <laughs> <laughs> so I buried all reviews you know. where I say nice things about Chris Brown, though. That's fine. It's true. <laughs> that, 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 that take aged extremely well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 cool. I mean, Chris he just Brown. had a nice song with a, you know, he sounded like a young Michael Jackson. Did a song with Jewels. Like, I think he's gonna go places. I don't see why why anybody would think anything bad of him, yeah. <laughs> except that he whistles. I don't like that. <laughs> oh god. But uh, yeah, no, uh, people were fighting for their lives to defend Young Thug in 2014, and I think the same applies for Blade on a smaller scale because it was kind of like, why don't you people see this genius? Like, right. what's wrong with you? Um, me, well, me listening to the lifestyle hook. <laughs> oh yeah, like, do you not get this? I was, I was, I was literally saying that to my girlfriend at the time when it came out. I was like, "What do you mean you don't like this?" 
<laughs> you can't hear the passion in this. Well, a uh, friend of the friend of the show and often contributor uh, Travis, aka Travi, you had mentioned that his uh, his significant other is a, is a drainer, uh, is a, a big big blade uh, fan, uh, which. Uh, Patrick and I both found it to be very funny. So shout out to couples that uh, drain together. You know, shout, shout out, <laughs> shout out to them. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's that's brilliant. Um, yeah, they're definitely going to stay together. If you drain together, you stay together. Yeah. You stay together, right? There's a lot of people out there like, oh man, I wish that was me. <laughs> yeah, God, I wish my girlfriend listened to Blade. God damn. <laughs> there's a there's a really this is a reference. I'm sure it'll probably be lost on either one of you, but there's a great like uh, it's circ- it circulates around Twitter sometimes. But there's like a a, a, a Yu-Gi-Oh clip from a show or something. I don't even know the show. I never watched like Yu-Gi-Oh on TV. You really but there's, set like, this up masterfully, by the way. There's a there's a clip where it's like <laughs> the man, he's like pounding his hands on the on the ground and he's like, oh, it, it should have been, been me. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been put across quite well. <laughs> no, nah, that's that's brilliant. Um, I've seen that a lot. Yeah, it's always yeah. in the response to some girls' posts or something. <laughs> Yeah, I just got myself a boyfriend. It's like That's it should have been me, not him. Yeah, That's absolutely where it is. <laughs> yeah, I like mean, I've, I've I've shared stories of my wife's reactions to my music when I wanted to uh, use um Ferrari boys to try out our Sonos speaker in our new house. <laughs> not having that even a little bit. Uh, now Ferrari boys, that's a fucking classic as well. But yeah, we <laughs> didn't could, you? Didn't you play? Uh, what was the Gucci song where it was like the feature price is going up? Didn't you play that one? I, I played it's going up for her a few times and she she doesn't care for that. She's, she's like, what does it mean? <laughs> she, she does not like his um, car going fast ad lib. I mean, while she bought that money, she's like, oh, she's he's like a little boy that thinks he's a plane. And it's like, look, mommy, I'm a plane. <laughs> it, is a, it is a rather unique ad lib, I will say. Uh, yeah, that's... Um, Shout out, shout out, shout out to, to Gucci at Libs. I managed to keep her away from all the clown music though. Like, but that was on purpose. Yeah, I think I think that would that would jeopardize that might jeopardize the marriage. Like you might that's, want that's to. a that's a bridge too far, I think. I mean that yeah. that's why the clown episode had so many bitter moments in it, because I've kept all the clown rap to the car. <laughs> so I was trapped in the car with it. <laughs> <laughs> it came off as really bitter because you had to be confined in a, in a small space listening to, to, uh, to my, the, my homie's the, baby mama. <laughs> All of the really uninspired ICP stuff. Oh yeah, this was like the de- this was like the their creative dead zone. <laughs> so it wasn't even like the good ICP. <laughs> the fact that I can distinguish between the two probably is not good. It probably says a lot about us that we can say that. <laughs> Well, why it's going to cut all of this from the podcast? Right, he's going to say it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> He'll somehow strategically edit this to be nothing but complimentary to ICB. He's, he's, he doesn't he doesn't uh, coast on our, our opinions, but um, so yeah. So where yeah, were we ever on, since um, ever since we're still on ever since. So. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I guess my f- closing thoughts, I guess, on ever since for that, it's like a it's not necessarily a one of one album, but I think for the time it was, and it was super. Uh, important for for Blade for the whole collective and um, for Cloud Rap as a whole. Like that's nowadays, that's definitely seen as a landmark album in the you know in the genre yeah. and, and rightfully so. And it's one of my. It used to be my favorite. I'm not sure if that's still the case, but it's definitely in in my top three Blade projects, no question. I just had a thought. Um, I'm pretty sure there probably isn't any chop not slopped Drain Gang, but is there any slowed in reverb? I'm sure dudes with anime. Oh, there are. definitely is. Um, right. I mean, there's like SoundCloud uploads, but I don't know about like whole tapes. I wonder if anybody like, like on Slater's mm-hmm. level, because Slater definitely is better than most of the dudes that do it. <laughs> well, yeah, because they because they started it, so it's kind of like their thing, right? Right, like, and just like I mean, people act like it's zero effort, but I think he really <laughs> did put more effort, like than just set changing a setting. So well, people, someone, and shout out, to, I forget the username, but someone in one of the YouTube uploads uh, gave us props for shouting Slater out as like the originator. So thanks, well, that's cool. thanks, thanks for listening to that. that, that uh, yeah. Thank you, commenter, that we can't recognize. That I can't remember, but I promise you I read the comment. <laughs> but there are plenty of these songs that I feel like would benefit from like a chopped and screwed treatment for sure. Like, I mean, they came up with a guy named Young Lean. Obviously, that's another influence of theirs. But just I feel like a lot of these vocals in the same sort of way like Travis Scott or Frank Ocean benefits from it. I feel like these right. sort of vocal, on, on a lot of 
blades poppier or more expansive efforts would just kind of benefit from being stretched out in that sort of infinity six, seven minutes long. Something like Missing Person or for sure Missing Person, Love Note, those two. Um, I don't know. Like, the thing about Wrist Cry and Skin is I don't know if I want to change them because they're such perfect closers, but I also see how they could be improved if you stretch them out. Yeah. And I, and I think um, these guys, you know, to your point about you're your talking about Travis and, and other rappers, um, these guys definitely had the ear of, of even mainstream rappers before they were even popular. There's a, in the, um, uh, there's a song called Mad Love on, on Monster, uh, the future mixtape, uh, which is, you know, classic. And, uh, uh, in that video for that song, future's wearing like a, a early, like, um, rain world hoodie oh yeah he which is which has world. now been if you go to the comments for that video it's like all the comments now <laughs> but that's yeah like, it's these guys it's were weird, yeah future and i don't know how many other artists but i mean future is usually at least was i don't know if he still is pretty tapped in with that stuff but i mean that's like a straight up like you 14 an artist on that level listening to or at least being aware of Drake, pretty big. I, I like to think he he wore that himself. I think it's more likely someone just gave it to him and he didn't know what it was. But either sure. way, I it's think very- it's a possibility. And I don't know. Well, I don't know, I don't yeah. know the status of I don't know the status of future stylist or or or, or lack thereof. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I mean, um, future's always been a pretty fashionable guy, but I don't know if he just found that hoodie on Grailed or something back in the day. Like, <laughs> I don't I mean, know. I know that Good was in the studio with Metro Boomin for um, Diamonds Dancing. He didn't actually officially contribute anything, but I know people said they were together in the studio. So I mean, it's it's yeah, it's it's possible. And we know that Travis fucks with uh, or did fuck with Lean. Yeah, yeah. There's another thing like those. There were definitely signs that bigger artists did fuck with them. You you know the story about um, Lean told interview Justin Bieber coming to like see him or whatever. Justin and, Bieber and was like picture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. It's just a. It's a very like, bizarre story, and Justin's security guard was like trying to like size him up or something. I, it was very strange. <laughs> it's what, yeah. and then there was there was that recent picture of Justin Bieber, and everyone said he looks like Young Lean in it, which I thought was a double double dose of irony. But yeah, yeah. Um, very, very funny. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. These guys definitely had the ears of, and I feel like ever since was was a part of that. Um, have, having the years of, of uh, you know mainstream rap and, and where it was going. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it it's it's. Uh, I mean, mainstream rap doesn't really. It, it it has lyrical themes similar to this now. Like, yeah. You, you know, like yeah. you get you get songs about being sad a lot now. Um, they're not sonically like ever since, but yeah, I mean, they're definitely like sad music is 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 music now. That that's that's music. You don't get like happy. Yeah, it's not. It's not even something real. that like we blink at anymore. It's just like, a, no. it's like it feels very you know standard. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about like who's probably like the biggest mainstream artist release in a long time, Billie Eilish, and mm. that's like the sad, like predominantly yeah. sad, dark music. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously huge notable artists in recent years. You know, Juice World X, etc. You know, large yeah. swaths of their music is. Is very sad, very you know, empty feeling. Um, That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah a lot, lot of, lot of like despair in there. So, I mean, you obviously on a mainstream level trace it back to Kanye and Cuddy on 808s. I think was the first big mainstream album to really broach these themes. Definitely, yeah, of course, it got. Oh, I mean, you know, Wayne too for time, sure. Yeah, Wayne too. Yeah, definitely, yeah. and Kid Cuddy, of course. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, without eight, without 808s, yeah, you you wouldn't have a lot of the stuff that came out now. I mean. It's it definitely set the blueprint for it being okay to use auto tune as well. That was a very important thing. Like that was frowned upon for some reason back in the day. But yeah, now it's like very common after all. Yeah. We have to re, you know reclaiming T Pain for sure. But uh, oh yeah, I mean I'm glad yeah. that's happening because you know his he's always been great. So not Akon though. I mean there are certain Akon. <laughs> overall. Akon just seems like a dickhead to me. Like, <laughs> Remember when he, he slammed that, that dude off stage? Oh, that was. I mean, that was like, like that was like 
a dickhead move, but it was like, it's also kind of funny. The vid is kind of funny. So. I mean, that was pro- no, that was like Pete. Like, I mean, I was saying that in a complimentary way. I think that was probably the peak of anything he's done. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's one of the best things he's ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that and the hook from Locked Up. And then he showed up on a, one of the worst DJ Khaled posse cuts. It's like the last thing I really remember him doing, where it's like, Welcome to my hood. <laughs> that song, that song then he sucks. Did like the sound of the, then he did like part of the hook from Sound to the Police on there. By oh, yeah. The the police. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty. Wait, was was that him or was that T-Pain? Oh, now I gotta look. No, that, you know what? That was T-Pain. That, that was T Pain. T Pain was, was on yeah, was, yeah. But he was definitely on like a shitty. Oh, no, was he on. What the fuck? Akon did We Taken Over. Oh, yeah. that's also good. That's also good. Then never mind. We Taken Over is great. That's like the yeah, best way. No. That's one of the, my favorite Wayne verses. Yeah. We take... Okay, so We Taken Over is also in Akon's corner. Um, so yeah. we have two. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, they... making a case for Akon. I didn't want to do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> he really does seem like an asshole. And I think his album was terrible, if I recall. Like his big to be album. Fair, yeah. It does. It does all link back to Blade because on delete intro, Blade says Blade one sound like Akon when he makes songs. So I mean, you know, That's, he does say that. There you he go. Does say that. So we're actually getting somewhat Akon appreciation on the podcast. We can't. We can't let this continue. We, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't let that to, happen. We have yeah. to swerve hard out of this one. So, <laughs> so after after ever since chronologically, is is D and G next, or am I missing something? No, that would be D and G. Yeah. Okay. So Which how, is um, how do you feel about DNG? Larry David face on DNG. This one, yeah, not not. This is probably the least favorite of the ones that I listened to for the project. I was very very disappointed with it when it came out, um, to a very extreme extent. Actually, I remember I think I only liked like two songs, um, and I said a lot of stuff like Blade sucks now and stuff. But you know, I was wrong because you know the Blade solo cuts here are not bad. Dumpster Baby is not bad. No Life Left is very good. Um, there is a lot of songs here I like, actually. The, the Echo songs were the ones I did like and still do, like um, uh, GTR and... Um, yeah. Uh, what, what What's the other? Oh, Stalker. With, yeah, like, those two were definitely my favourites. But, I mean, it's by no means, like, an excellent project. It's got a lot of filler, in my opinion. It's nowhere near... It's not touching Trash Island, not even slightly, but um, it's yeah. it's like got some good songs, like but they're all just they're all just good yeah. songs. I think it's yeah. a pretty. I, I think I, it's a. I really enjoy the project. I think it's um, but I do I do agree. It feels very uh, kind of like low stakes. Yeah, for them. definitely was. It Man, definitely, there's nothing wrong with a low stakes project. Yeah. And by the way, I still have this at a six. I don't hate it or anything no left no real impression on me like there was nothing that really grabbed me like i need to replay this every other one even the ones i rated less than the others i replayed something off of it most of them i replayed the whole well album. this one i just was like all right moved on moving on like i got the i got the point from it there was nothing that i was like cringing at like the, no. the lyrics definitely felt throwaway but like I mean, the lyrics they were, were you know, for sure yeah yeah it, it felt like that the, the guys really wanted to put like something out, and they were like, "All right, you know, like let's, um, you know, let's let's just make a, a bunch of songs and, and put them out." Um, mm. I do think that you know for that for that measure, um, I, I do I do enjoy it, and I think it it feels very um, it feels kind of like breezy, like it's not. I feel like the other projects, and this is not a, a knock to them feel like more of an investment i feel like this song is uh, this song this uh, album is good because you can like pick and choose songs and kind of th- put yourself into it as more of like a it's almost like a label comp even though it isn't yeah it's really. like a showcase for everyone, right really yeah that, that, that's that's the vibe that i got from it and, and i really I, I enjoy it um i wouldn't i don't um, it's not in like their top 10 projects or whatever no it's it's definitely a project that I that I enjoy. I really it's like enjoy. Like Drain Gang, The Swarm, Volume One. <laughs> yeah, there's I, yeah. the first. I will say the first two songs are incredible songs. I love yeah, those. Yeah, really really that was really good. That was the other one. The song. The first song. I, I mean, the second song is very good too. But the first song had me primed for something that was going to be really fucking good. And by like the fifth song, I'm like, I know what we're getting here. 
he says some really weird shit on No Life Left. I can't remember what the lyrics are exactly, but like the, some of the lyrics that are really weird. Like it sounds like he wrote them and like like really badly translated or something something like that. But I, I do I do love that song because the hook is so catchy and mm-hmm. and another brilliant White Armor beat as well. Yeah, um, I think this is a uh, I think this is like a a project for fans really. Like if you're a yeah. fan, you're probably gonna like this um, and enjoy it because it's just you know it's for the most part like. <laughs> To me, anyway, for the most part, it's like it's good songs. I like I like pretty much almost all the songs, mm. and uh, then there's some standouts on there. Um, I really like G- like GTR, I like Wicker Man, obviously the first two tracks. Oh, uh, Wicker Man um, is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, Wicker, Wicker Man, Wicker Man's great. I think um, um, Cinderella for me is the is the centerpiece, and I mm. I didn't like that one at first, but when I re-listened to it, it's that yeah. song is like it's very self-referential. It feels like right. a callback to a lot of stuff. Um, and I just love Echo as well. So that shit is just crazy. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny. I'm looking. I'm looking at the track list right now, and uh, it's like I'm thinking of all the songs that I the, the songs that I like from here, and I'm kind of like just named like eighty percent of the project. So the I, Thai I, I boy tracks are weak, in my opinion. Uh, Wrong is weak. Um, Can't trust is pretty weak. But, I like, you I know, like the closer. I like him on the closer. What's the closer again? Climbing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the best one on there. Um, in general, mm-hmm. I used like I said, I used to think Blade was the worst performer on the album when I when it when I when I first heard it. But I I very much changed my mind. I think Blade and Blade and Neko do very well. Tarboy's fine. Um, the lean features are very low effort. I will say that, um, mm-hmm. especially compared to like like it makes sense compared to Trash Island now but obviously when Trash Island didn't exist and this was the only Drain Gang project it was kind of like huh um, but yeah it, it's definitely li- it's very highly listenable some great songs just not yeah it, it's not like a, it's not it doesn't feel like more of a I have to like I'm immersing myself in this sound it's more of like hey I'm I'm, I'm I, sometimes I judge music off this a little bit but it's like oh I'm driving somewhere for like 15 minutes I'm gonna throw some <laughs> It's very casual. No, that's, yeah. that's a good, that's a good metric to ju- judge music by, and I've gotten pretty lazy about that. I'll just, I mean, that's a good thing about having a car, and I'm also very stuck in my time period because I have a five CD changer, and it's good for just putting in music that I know and just seeing play on. So I've been listening to the same music for quite a while in that regard. But yeah, and I but actually yeah, think that like, that's helpful. There's like a lot of good like familiarity you can form with with albums that you previously might not have been like that familiar with. I mean, that's how I grew up listening to music in my mom's car was just the same CD over and over. Having a CD changer was like that. That was a revolutionary <laughs> variety because you could change between two or three. You didn't have to do it manually. My family was lazy as fuck. So getting a change between one Madonna CD and another was that was <laughs> fucking relief. Uh, that's brilliant. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So how do you? Um, so I guess we you know we pretty much covered. DNG, I, I would assume working on Dying would be the next. That would project. be the, uh, yeah. And this project, um, when I was first getting into Blade, was like a, a huge favorite, and and still is. And I have a uh, a small vendetta against the portion of the the Drain community on RYM that has this rated lower than some of his other projects, because like I mean, it's got like its rating has gone up. It's got like a good rating, but it only like, has one song at a four, though. I mean, I'm kind of mad that I've enabled track ratings because some very generous user, shout out to them, sorry that I don't remember your name, gifted me a subscription for a year, which I will be renewing because it has a lot of cool shit. On it. But uh, one of them is track ratings, being able to yeah. see them, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of mad that I can do this now because I can see some people's <laughs> dumbass fucking opinions. <laughs> and there's only one song at a four on here because people, I guess, like you said, there's some people with a weird vendetta against this. Granted, the song at a four is probably the song that deserves it over the rest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which one's that? That's debatable. Cherry bracelets. It's debatable. I mean, there's two or three um, songs fighting for the best song on here. It's a fan favorite uh, song, Cherry Bracelets, to my knowledge. I that I could say I could see that being the most like universal favorite. Right. Well it, it it's just a young lean song, really. So with like, like if we, with like twenty seconds of echo on it. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a very minute part from Echo, and then um, it def- that definitely feels like a lean song he didn't want to use for his album. Not that that matters, because yeah. it's a mixtape after all. And, right. and it also it, it wouldn't have fit. Vibe. I mean, that came out around Stranger. That wouldn't have fit on Stranger at all. No, nah, not even slightly. <laughs> yeah, Stranger was like, way too fucking sad for that song. 
So, yeah, um, mm. I love that song. I I fucking love this project. It's top three Blade. It's I have it, I've had it. You know, <laughs> I said it was a uh, according to the the streaming algorithms. It was like my most uh, listened to project of the last like you know year plus or whatever. So I definitely wow. uh, played the shit out of it in like from I heard it in like early 2020, and I played the shit out of it for like the the rest of that year. Especially oh, that's by the way, optimal. I have um, after listening to this two or three more times, come around on Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper also fucking rules. Gatekeeper. Oh yeah, that was the one song I didn't like on my first listen. I was like, yeah, I don't really like the way he's rapping on this. It kind of kills the vibe a little bit. I was stupid. Gatekeeper also rules. Gatekeeper is really hard. The way he talks about it is, is uh, I love the like. Um, is it, is it R. I. P. Barry? Right. That's that's the good. That's the that's the. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. what he says that on. Yeah, yeah. I think so. He talks yeah. about. Yeah, and then he transitions into like that like bridge part before the hook. Like, um, I I don't I didn't know Blade has been locked up a few times. You know, I didn't I didn't I didn't know, but uh, made him cautious. Um, yeah, but yeah, sh- sh- that that's a great song. This whole tape, his lyrics I mean, are very interesting on Wicked and Dying. They're very they're interesting. very interesting. There's I mean, first of all, this is like one of the peak like working on dying like full all right so i have tapes. to ask because i'm super behind on shit and obviously chris you would be the expert optimal you've heard way more of this how like am like how much of a good example is this of working on dying's work is this like out of their wheelhouse is this like <laughs> kind of emblematic of what they do or it's a pretty good example i'd say um yeah. stuff like lordship is definitely um Stuff I didn't like, know how much of this was them like kind of frosting it up, for lack of a better term, to make it seem I mean, colder for like hitting the whole it, drink gang aesthetic, or if this is just like strictly how they sound. No, I love it's, it. I it's fucking a, love it. I need to hear more of their shit. But it, it's not yeah, as it's, it's not as dark as like the the twenty yeah. the twenty fifteen sixteen stuff or like the. Oh, stuff. they've also done shit with uh, Uzi, right? I mean, I've heard their shit with Uzi. I'm sure. Yeah, that yeah. Stuff is, which is which yeah. is interesting because that is is more of like a pop ish feel and it, it kind of blends together although i guess not the not some of the songs that ended up on verse the world too but regardless i feel like that it's an interesting that you bring that up because i feel like this is kind of like a midpoint between that stuff mm. the stuff and, and then the stuff that we look at with like you know all the five finger posse guys like chapo you know except down the line you know the, the really yeah. the darker stuff uh, all the cray all the stuff on the tread mix you know yeah the the five finger posse stuff like that stuff is is definitely very different to to this uh work but um but it's it's it, it's definitely some of that tread feel like they don't make tread at all anymore no um, no like not it, even slight it, it's more yeah it's more like just uh pop rap with like but different this is, tempos yeah but this is still definitely a tread tape you know there's maybe a couple songs that don't really have tread beats i guess but um on on the whole it's a pretty good example yeah the rhythms and the tempos and like the 808s and stuff like it feels like feels like i mean i'm not like an extra expert like producer or anything but no it has that it has that like prototypical sound like you mentioned lordship red light moments to me has has that kind of sound uh, as well yeah Yeah, red light moments beat for the loopers dude we're gonna die and do the beat for the loopers i didn't know that shit okay they did they did a few they did they did i think they did a few there was a project there was a loopers project last year that had um that, uh, mazel online i think it was or mazel online or gremlin was one of them i think I, it was I, no mazel online it was mazel online i have it i didn't know they were on that um, yeah they did they did um i think most of it was them or at least some of it because there was some <laughs> I, I know filthy and him have, had, have done work before so Right, they're not actually cre- they're credited on the singles from it, but not on the album page. So oh, interesting. I thought of it, but I, mean, I could have sworn when I listened to it, and I don't think I listened to it like once or twice. I could have sworn when I listened to it, I heard some of their tags, but that might be me misremembering shit. I mean, it makes oh. sense. The Loopers has like crazy good taste in production and picks just off the wall. Like, sure, shout yeah, out not- to that Loopers album from this year. It's so fucking good. Definitely got me on my top ten. So yeah, that that news of Loopers was 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 tight. I, I but yeah, in terms of working on dying, I think uh, I think it is it's still a good representation of the sound, um, and I absolutely love every song on here. Like I've I've played each song on here, no question, like in the three digits at least. Like it's a definitely personal 
favorite of mine when it comes to blade and, and drinking in general. And, um, like even, I know it depends on the comments I see. Some of the comments don't like, don't like certain songs as much as others, but I'm a pretty big fan of all of them. Songs that I liked at first, but didn't even love like D925. I really appreciated that over time. Mm. Um, I think I really appreciated Under Your Spell over time. That's, that's, my, that's that was one of my favorites at one, at one point. Yeah, that's a, that's an awesome song. Like the yeah. way he the way he writes that. Uh, oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's really great. Uh, um, thick length too. Like, I think I, this is kind of a this rap really really well style. I think just from, again from having listened to this stuff all a handful of times compared to you guys, I think this is kind of the rap answer to Tiger. Tiger is more like an R and B sort of thing, where it's one producer, yeah. one singular vision. This mm-hmm. is like more wrapped and more, but it's the same sort yeah. of thing. One producer, you know, one session, one short mm-hmm. verse, just very addictive. Every line's kind of a hook that sticks in your head. These are just more like yeah. rap, forward, propulsive, just different sort, of like you know, same sort of aesthetic, but different sort of mood. And both are equally effective. Yeah. That's why they're two of my three. Well, I mean, my two favorites because the third favorite is through next time. So yeah, these were my two favorites, and I think for a lot of the same reasons, they just had different approaches. Yeah, no, that's a good that's a good point. And, and it, you mentioned the short burst, you know, twenty seven minutes, uh, nine tracks, like very economical, extremely <laughs> quotable. I mean, Best Buy is is the shit. Oh like, God, what a, what a song! It was very really brave him to put that as the last song. I must say, <laughs> very brave, but it paid off. It did. So. It it, uh, it it did, and the the beat, how it's so eerie, how it comes on with like drinking shit, man. Like all all of Ty Boy's like little vocal shit on here. Oh, the Ty Boy tags are so funny. It's so funny where it's like uh, you know legendary is, member, yeah. man. <laughs> or like uh, what's, what's, man. what's the one yeah, on yeah. um oh fuck what's the uh, Knights Bridge when he's like um it's your boy Ty Boy man shouts out Blady man. Drinking CEO man, <laughs> <laughs> and you and you hear like and you hear the oscillating like working on dying ties in the background like, you know I'm working on dying like in in the, in the background. Yeah. It's, to me, it's like the hardest shit. I don't know why, but it's it's tough to describe if you haven't heard it. But it, it's it always gets me amped for the song. It it really feels like a mixtape, um, more so than anything else he's done that he's called a mixtape because it has like as you said like the tags, and the producer tags all over it like. Obviously, White Armor doesn't really have a beat tag, um, but like working on dying, you know, they were they were probably quite proud of that shit. So, you know, and it's literally oh, I, named after. Yeah. yeah, and that's it is interesting. Also, I've um, I've definitely like posted this to like or a song off this to like an Instagram story before, and thinking to myself, I wonder what people when they look at it see this weird ass cover art. Like, what what is this kid listening to? because <laughs> oh, i've cool. i've actually gotten that before like some random mutual has like swiped up on something i posted it been like what the hell is this like <laughs> some shit like that so i wonder this weird ass like very deliberately like um how, how do i how do i put the how do, I, how do i put this cover art it's like very deliberately yeah. ugly <laughs> yeah um, yeah i think i think he won up that one with the ice dancer cover. Yeah, that where it's like idiots. it's in, indecipherable. Yeah, <laughs> they're both absolutely like, deliberately ugly, ugly, like Lil B Pink Flame, deliberately ugly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind yeah. of. Yeah, I'd say. I'd where say. it's like uh, it, it's to me, I can't imagine the tape without that as the cover art now. But just when you when yeah, you first, when you first see it, you're like, oh, this is kind of weird. Yeah, you first see it, you're like, God damn, what the hell? Like, especially after Everson's, which had like a super serious, really artsy looking uh, right. uh, uh, album on. No, I think that the mixtape feel, it's very breezy. It's part of why, you know, I love it so much. And Red Light Moments is definitely, I don't know if I have a favorite because I love all the songs so much, but Red Light Moments, the, the hook on that is so beautiful. Like the way it comes on, uh, it's really sweet. That's a brilliant song. Um, kind of a prelude to Red Light too, right? Like clearly he, uh, clearly he liked that theme because um, there was some singles too where he mentions the red light and stuff. So that was obviously like a motif for him at the time. Um, and it feels, yeah. it feels like, uh, it feels kind of like neon lights. Like it feels like a, a kind of that that sort of song where when I when I listen to it, the imagery that I conjure in my head is like nighttime neon like city life 
Which is kind of an image that I get out of their beats a lot, where it's like neon lights against like snowfall or just like cold, like, you know, condensed air against just like hot city lights. Like, mm. you just kind of get that. Like, I feel like that's just an aesthetic they have all the time. So for him to kind of just personify that in the red light seemed like a natural, like, writing impulse. Um, I think my favorite hook on here is either Cherry Bracelets or Backstreet Boys. Backstreet Boys is so sick. Backstreet yeah. Boys feels like it has like five or six different hooks packed yeah. into it. Like, and this this goes along with the thing of him and Cray are a amazing duo. Yeah, I mean it's hard to beat Friday Night, but I mean they yeah, got a lot of great songs. You know, there's a lot of competitors that um, yeah, even the the, the one Blue from last year or the year before that's. That's one that I love oh, personally. Blue's fantastic. Yeah, yeah I, I love that. I love that beat, those notes, and like the hook. Yeah, I remember uh, the producer Free Diesel previewing that on Twitter, and everyone was a bit, where everyone was like, "When's this dropping?" And then it didn't drop for like another year. I don't know why, but um, people used to say, "Oh, the mixing sucks in that song." I was like, "Nah, you don't." Nah. Yeah, that song nah. is. That song is it's only. perfect. Yeah. That song kind of feels like working on nine type song, I think. Um, yeah, it, it's more like straightforward rap y. Like, the, even the way that, like, mm. Blade does the like the little verse on that, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. So I'm looking at the top. I wanted to see what was ahead of this on the mixtape list for 2017. The 2017 mixtape list is interesting as fuck. The best mixtape of 2017 is Pop 2 by Charlie XCX. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Good she choice. shows up because she because she couldn't because she couldn't uh, release. She shows it. up again with number one angel. I did not know these were mixtapes. Yeah, and, uh, no, noted mixtape artist Sufjan. Uh, noted mixtape uh, banger artist Sufjan Stevens shows up at twenty one <laughs> with the greatest uh, gift. Oh yeah, tape. yeah. The definition of a mixtape got stretched way too far at one point. I think. <laughs> yeah. The the Charlie stuff she actively released them as mixtapes because her, her label it was some label shit she couldn't release them as like albums or whatever. Yeah, but she just want to shelve the songs, um, so she just yeah. put them out, which was Supion some clean shit. Steven, right? Supion Stevens is like fifteen spaces away from the first good Wayne dedication mixtape, an actual mixtape in like four <laughs> dedications. <laughs> Thank you, oh, RYM. <laughs> What an interesting, yeah. interesting list. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, this project uh, can, can, continues to rise over time and eventually, like, gets a bold or something because that would be super sick. And, uh, I think they all will live one day. Yeah, Rym has trending. Yeah, has become a pro drain place, so it will, uh, which is also awesome. drain your music. <laughs> drain your music, drain, indeed. Drain your music. <laughs> we should uh, we should we should tell Sharifi that uh, he'll get his Tesla faster if he bolds the the blade uh, all the blade projects. Like just... He's actually already got like two after the past couple of drives. True. Oh like, god, drives. he's trying he... to get a garage full of them like Jay Leno. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as uh, that glitch wave update drops, he's going to be rolling in it. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean it's just going to look so good. I'm all right. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's definitely Jeez. not going to have comment boxes from four years ago in there. Full of people that no. I banned. And that have banned me. Which is just great. I'm pretty sure Streets is in that comment box. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, oh what, a, what, a, what a time. What a, what a, what what a time, time to be alive, man. Shout oh out to Less so to Drake. Um, Chris, where would you rank working on dying in your blade uh, tier list? Uh, I would say, mm, that's a good question. It it, it kind of depends because um, I've come around to all of his twenty, all of his twenty twenty projects. Well, not all of them, mm-hmm. but Triple Three and uh, Ex- Exeter now rank mm-hmm. very highly to me. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know, man. Like it's probably not top five, but it's probably like top six it's probably like uh, there's, there's, there's not many i dislike there's not many i like less but then there's not many I, there's not that many i like more i guess i don't know man hard right. hard one. yeah it's it, there's a there's a level of quality that is really consistent so i can see where it is tough to rank because once i get yeah, outside of my top, the middle, I'd say. once i get outside of like my top three i have i have really trouble ranking them because a lot of them are so good 
Yeah, it's very difficult. Yeah. It's very hard. I mean, it's in my top three right now, but again, mm-hmm. I need to like go through the more recent stuff and then I'll probably have a different ranking. But it's in my top three right now, yeah. for sure. It is as well for me. And if you put a gun to my head, I might say it's my favorite, but it depends on the day. <laughs> uh, Let's hope nobody does that. Let's, I would, if anyone puts a gun to my head and says, what's your favorite Blade project? I'm telling them to pull the trigger. Yeah, no, uh, yeah. On, on the clearly, side. clearly, I've I've been destined for. <laughs> First of all, it's a very strange thing for somebody to decide your life upon. <laughs> uh, the decision that yeah. Blake probably endorsed circa ever since. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say ever since that might save my life. <laughs> I feel like if you say, I feel like if you say good luck, he just shoots you. <laughs> he shoots you, no question. He's like, what the fuck? You like the happy one? No, I like can't. Fucking newbie, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, I, I'm a real TikTok Blade fan. That's that's what it is. That's. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, we'll we'll finish off part one with red light. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, red light is, and I, I I heard someone say this. Red light is like, it's not a darker album lyrically than ever since, but the the sound of it is like very very. Well, someone said very UK nightlife, and I have to agree with that myself. I don't know why it is UK nightlife sounding, but to me that is what it says because he's you know Blade lived in London for a fair bit of time. Um, and I definitely think, I mean, it might be because of like the Barla Club affiliations, like Uli K is on there, um, as we all know, on that thing you do. Um, and I don't know. I, to me, it's it's arguably a better album than ever since because it's got like high, like way higher highs in my opinion. The um, highs are it, the highs are so high. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, Hex, One um, D. Uh, yeah. Puppet Master, um, uh, both both songs with Echo. You know, yeah. there's just there's just so many. Oh, um, the, oh, mate, honestly, to so many good songs. But then at the same time, um, it's it's rarely it's rarely the case that I ever want to put this one on. Honestly, and I don't know why. I think it's very mood specific. Like. Mm-hmm. Ever since it's like generally a sad album, whereas Red Light is more. Red Light is somewhere between um, Ever Since and working on Dying lyrically. Like, there's a couple like funny lyrics here and there, but then there's also some very sad songs. Um, yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. It, it's definitely got a stronger first half than a second in general. Um, but oh, and Decay, obviously. I mean, God, yeah, God, God, that one. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a great. But, one. It's a great, it's a great album. Like he, he didn't miss at all with that. And why armor again? Impeccable beats. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's just a great album. I, I would definitely. Um, that, that, that's another one I would play to people. In fact, that's probably an even better one to play to people than ever since. Because as I said, it's a bit more well rounded. Um, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's great. I don't know where it would rank for you guys. I can't remember what you guys said. Before. It's got a, it's got another. I mean, he, you know, another fantastic uh, opener. With with one D, I mean, yeah, uh, absolute genius. Just doesn't miss on. I mean, even just the way it comes in with the little like you know, I can't even. I, you know the melody, but I can't just. I can't describe it. Oh yeah, it's uh, the way yeah. it comes with little, little little bloops and uh, he uh, you know with the whole. Which do should, are we gonna knight blade? Should he be knighted? I don't know. If we. I think he should be knighted blade. in the should night. He, he's in the night only at night. <laughs> I feel like a knight. He should be knighted in the night for sure. It. And. But he the way the, the way he goes into like I know they hate me but they want to be me and then the B comes in it's just oh it's brilliant he he loves talking about knights like in fact I've remember, I've remember the weird lyric on No Life Left he says who came up with the knight like what what do you mean <laughs> what do you mean who came up with the knight like he loves talking about that shit but I think that makes I feel sense. like it comes with like the territory knights cold snow like I feel like they're all kind of yeah like, with each other just like lyrical mm-hmm. concerns that go with the instrumentals the whole aesthetic. Um, yeah, I feel like it's um I feel the last the title of the last track kind of sums this one up for me. I'm goofy. Like instrumentally, I feel like it's just as good as anything he's ever done. First track, just as good as anything he's ever done. The run from the echo tracks through to uh that thing you do, although Nike just do it is by far my favorite song on here. Oh, that's a far. great song too. Yeah. I that I love that, that song. Here. I that love song that is song. amazing and like probably top ten, top five song of his. But I feel like it peaks around there and then it's 
the lyrics on this are distractingly silly and I can't point to any like um, <laughs> examples, but I feel like he's noticeably just kind of, this is what you said about a previous song where it sounds kind of like his lyrics were run through like some sort of weird, like ESL filter or something. Yeah. Like, there's, there's something about these lyrics that just, they were distracting at points from how pretty the songs were or how engaging the hooks were. Like, I still like this album a lot. I gave it a seven. It's going to grow on me. It sounds really good, but I think lyrically, it's this this portends him being happier later on i will say that much and the fact that this yes. happened before ice dancer chronologically is very surprising to me because i feel like ice dancer was a bigger continuation of where he was at on ever since than this is this feels well, like bridging into the yeah. happy period yeah i agree because ice dancer which i which i've some seen some people say is about an abusive relationship i don't know how true that is but ice dancer is definitely about like some pretty you know pretty heavy topics um but Red Light really isn't, and as you say, like, you know, c- calling them Drain Gang One Direction on the first song is, ob- like, he's obviously not being that serious. Yeah. This one. Yeah. And, like, the whole of, like, Westfield is pretty silly. Um, fake News is kind of silly. Puppet Master and I'm Goofy, you know, they're, like, both a little bit silly in concept, yeah. but, like... I'm Goofy has a great fucking beat. Yeah, well, that, that, well that's, a very, that's a very unique beat for yeah. White Armour. Very surprising that this was all him. Really, it's it's a lot more uh, sonically diverse than ever since. Um, and obviously, decay, which um, has lyrics about being in the sewer and shit, um, is is quintessential sad blade. Really, so yeah, I agree with what you're saying. It's a, it's a it's a it's a little strange. Also, his the the way they mixed his voice on this album is completely different to everything else he did. Um, I don't know. Don't really know why, but I just feel like he sounds a bit more cracky and um, like they put a very different style of autotune on his voice compared to like uh, Ice Dancer. Uh, that's how I hear it anyway, because he he just he just sounds a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's kind of like more of a raw feel to him. That's kind of what I get anyway. But, yeah. yeah, I would. Um, I think that Obedient feels like a centerpiece like moment on mm-hmm. here. Uh, oh, like that's just such a it's so great i mean there's there's a bunch of superlatives you can use to talk about it but i mean it's probably it's echoes verse is probably one of my favorite like verses of the last few years on it like it's phenomenal I, I love just the whole um the whole like every time i close my eyes like you know i stop existing and mm, um, yeah the the part that's about so like, good. That's yeah really the part he's like every now and then i can tell the difference and he's talking about um I love that he's like, ever since we met, these thoughts keep getting worse. Like, I love, yeah, I just love cool everything. He does that. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love his whole verse and the way that it's structured. And he just kind of like runs it. And uh, it's, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. The, the Echo features are great. Um, what do you think about the Uli K feature? Hmm. I think it's like, I think it's interesting. It's not something that like I would have expected to hear. Um, I don't know if you guys are very familiar with Uli K or not. Do you guys know I'm much not, about him? I'm not. No, I can't fi- I'm that. not super Honestly, familiar. It didn't really like move the needle one way or another. Like it. Did, like, no, I'm not familiar. So I'm not familiar with. I think it's. I think it's her actually. Now I should say, um, but still, um, their music. Clearly, I'm not familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their music is very. Um, is very. Uh, uh, Ragaton inspired, you know, very like UK nightlife type music, really. Um, but they did make a lot of like depressing, uh, Drain style songs, such as It's Army, which is probably his most, fa- uh, their most famous song, uh, which is produced by Rip Squad. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have heard that yes. one. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I um, heard that one, yeah. Yeah. Um, so and this was actually the last song they made together because she got exposed for doing some weird stuff. Um, um so that was the end of their working relationship but as it is very strange that this is like that's one of the only non-drain features on uh, a drain project since glue so it's a very interesting choice really i think to have have them on the song but yeah i, I, quite like the I just want to so what i mean i could look this up very easily but what fe- have, what if any features have they done outside of their circle um I guess just. Do you mean like what songs have they featured on for for other people? Oh. Yeah, not features that they've had. Features that they've done for other people. Um, like well, there's work. there's 
Well, there's the, all the Black Cray songs, including Seven Roses, which is my favourite of those. Yeah. Um, there's the Prada main song, Soul Loser, which has an amazing, amazing Blade verse. Um, there's a lot of U- Uli K and also Blaze Kid, who was another UK artist. Um, who there's definitely there's, def- there's definitely more, but like those are the main few I can think of. He's got Blaze got some with Eve Tumor as well, technically, he, but but it's yeah. not. On- it's not under Eve Tumor's name; it's under Shanty. Um, so that's another that's another feature. Um, I only I only discovered that recently. Yeah, it's an interesting one with Felix Lee too on it. Uh, but again, credited differently. Um, but, I would just like to yeah. congratulate you on being the first person to successfully pronounce Eve's tumor on the show without struggling. <laughs> that's, that's a, a, that's a uh, uh, that is. I feel like that's just categorical. I've definitely nailed it at least once. Come on. <laughs> I definitely nailed it in, in my year end list last year. I feel like I definitely nailed it. <laughs> yeah, but you know. Yeah, um, a shit ton, really. Back back in the day, at least. Not so much now. Um, I just kind of feel like they'd be really good for hook duties for other people. And I'm not saying I want to hear them on everyone's hook, but I feel like certain people like could. I'm, not, I'm, tr- I'm struggling to think of who, though. But like, I just feel like they'd be a good left field choice every once in a while. Like either Blade or Tie Boy, or like any of them. Just to he was on the, um, that ten cell phones track. Um, can't judge. Can't, can't. Yeah, can't judge. Oh, I think yeah. I, I think I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, that's a pretty good song actually. It's just it was very surprising because that what the fuck do those two have in common? Um, right. He also did those features for Ron Ron Splash, and people hate those songs because it doesn't sound like Blade. But he, he does some interesting stuff with his flow on those. So. Did you say that band's name is Ron Ron Splash? Yeah. Oh. Two songs. Two, two songs. Uh, like how I trap and bussin. All right. I'm not actually. I haven't heard those. Of that. I was about to, but I, I don't care about Ron Ron Splash. We're just going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> and a, a couple songs for Kai with Kai. Yeah, God, too, obviously. Um, Let Me Go is quite a popular one. Yeah. And, um, yep. Yep. And I want it all as well. Was the first yes. one? Yes. Yeah. And um, shit. There's one more. There's there's another. Well, one. the Ice Dancer submission. Yeah, the Ice Dancer uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, and the book. I think there is one, one more. Oh, I think, uh, uh, I'm forgetting with DJ Nate as well. Yeah. That's, that's that was a good one. So yeah, yeah. They've they've kept it pretty in in house recently, I guess. I, I feel like Cray would probably be the artist that they have the most collabs with. I imagine. Yeah. Oh, um, I forgot Xavier Wolf as well. Back in the day, a couple of oh, yes. Xavier Wolf. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. I hadn't. Uh, I hadn't Ice it. Floors is an absolute classic. I love that song. Yeah, that was when Xavier Wolf was good. Oh yeah, well he hasn't, he hasn't been good in fucking ages. So. Uh, ages, yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. Just because um, you mentioned that they had the ear of mainstream artists, but it doesn't seem like they ever actually broke through and got any mainstream features or for anybody. Or no. Although, oh, yeah. I assume they've ghostwritten some stuff. Like, I assume that's how it goes. But they probably did some reference tracks that we'll never hear. There has been, I know that, I mean, I know that, um, I forget where I've, I know that, like, Frank is aware of them. I know that, uh, I mean, Charlie did, like, a little interview with Blade before Blades, um, before Good Luck came out, I think. Um, where they like well, did like they a have an unreleased song as well, don't they? Yeah, um, she said they were coming out. Which yeah, is a shame. She's, yeah, she's uh, she's big. She's a big fan of 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 them. Um, she had mentioned that previously, and then in an interview, like they did the joint interview together, and she talked about how like big of a fan she was. So I mean, I could see, and that I could see that fitting into like you know who she generally yeah. collapsed with these days. Anyway, I think that's like a fair. Um, you know, comparison to, to make. I would love to hear a uh, a Charlie song over like a good beat or a white armor beat. That would be interesting. That'd be fire. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I would be super into that. So hope we can just you know cross our fingers uh, for that. Um, because that would be. I mean, a Charlie and Blade collab is like they took something and they wrote like Caleb on it and they they put it out there in the in the world. Because I would I would definitely be all over that. Oh, so, same. Yeah. Definitely. I would say that I generally trust Charlie's judgment, but she also gave us all those Tommy Cash features. Oh God! I mean, there weren't That's that bad. many. There weren't that. There was like two. There were two. Ma- all of them is too many. All of them is too many. The fact that they there was, there was there was one of them that I didn't mind, but the I, 
Yeah. The only thing that's worse than the Tommy Cash features is the Jay Park feature on Unlock It. That's just unforgivable. He should be in prison for that. He just ruined. <laughs> I don't know. Song. Ruining totally. is pretty bad. I mean, like I agree with you. That's objectively worse like just like you, on a performance level but ruining click is bad enough like just why the, why are you on the, the click list? remix is way better with the, the, click remix is, the click remix is fire the click remix is way, much much better yeah. um but i'm not aware yeah no of click Sh- remix i need to hear that i it was I, just dropped as a single it's called like no boys click no boys maybe something like that uh yeah what's is it like big frida on it or something or Nah, nah. It's just it's just her, Kim Petras, and Slater. And Slater, yeah. It's uh, a yeah. it's just it's just called Click No Boys Remix. That's that's I'll the one. Yeah, it yeah. It's super hard. Yeah, that's infinitely better. I mean, you could technically just replace the normal one with that in the track list. And why don't boom. people make bootlegs of Charlie stuff like they do of Kanye stuff or Blade stuff? Where they like you could do it. There's enough Charlie material out there. Oh, they have they've got bootlegs of there's 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 plenty of Charlie bootlegs. Oh, there's there's XTX World. The whole yeah, lost out world, yeah. There's the there's one. there's the Minecraft one too. There's that Minecraft. Oh god, the mine. I don't even know what Minecraft is or whatever it's called. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I yeah. don't know what that shit is. No, no, it's like it's Minecraft the same thing. Shit. It's just like a it's just like a I think it's just like a uh, a fan made comp thing. It's kind of like the hundred gex thing that that happened. Where yeah, it was like yeah, a, Sim- similar to that. Yeah, yeah it's like it's, sim- seek it's out similar. It's similar. Hundred gex supplementary material, so I wouldn't know. I have nothing against hundred Gax, but it's just like I'm not like going to seek out the yeah. rare shit. I was just I was just using it as a comparison point because they're very. I think it's like the same. Yeah, sort of similar. Yeah. It, it's yeah. the same fan base, so that doesn't surprise yeah. me. But yeah, sure. Also true. Um, yeah. So yeah. Red, so yeah, Red Light didn't really like. I mean, I like a lot about it, but do, like lyrically, it just seemed. Again, I think that I like classic Patrick fucking move as I listened to shit out of order and spoiled this for myself because I think that I would have appreciated it a lot more had I not heard had ice dancer not knocked me on my ass right before this. Cause this felt like a step backwards in retrospect. It wasn't, although I feel like again, ice dancer has a lot more in common with the previous stuff. And this has a lot yes. more in common with future happier material, at least lyrically, uh, production wise, it's kind of in the middle, but still excellent production, excellent songwriting, no bad song, just the, lyric like the lyrical content's a little jauntily like i don't yeah. know if the right word but it's just kind of like incongruous sometimes feels a little slept just like it's normally i can forgive a lot of their lyrics feeling lazy or like placeholder or just like they're there for the emotions they're there for the vibe like i'll forgive a lot of the shit with their lyrics and for the most part here i was a little bit distracted that's what i'll say I still think this yes. is very good. High seven type shit. Like I still enjoyed it, but that was my criticism. Yeah. Um, yeah. This this could be above um, ever since me on some days, but like in general, it's not. Definitely not. Um, but it is. It does have amazing eyes for sure. Um, so it's it's definitely worth a listen for anyone who likes. Right. Like, and then, like, and like, Nike, you like Nike song is the. That Nike song is one of his best songs. Like that song is fucking dizzyingly fucking good. Yeah. And it's a really yeah. under it's a really underrated song in the in the Blade catalog too. Most people don't really have it as one of their favorites on that album. But it's a great really song. are you fucking yeah. kidding? Really? Yeah, no, no, no. The, no. Usually the people point to like One D or Obedient. I mean, obviously. I mean, One D is amazing. One D is my second favorite song. That, like he has a history of good openers, and that's another one of them. So. Yeah, all of I can't think of a single opener on any pro- project of his that wasn't like, I mean, especially I mean Blade Solo, especially that like wasn't great. No, I I I agree. Um, yeah. I don't think he's got any weak openers at all. Um, maybe Good Luck, but that doesn't really count because that's like a one minute. Yeah, it's more. Yeah, it's more of an intro. Yeah. But aside, aside from that, no, all, all his openers are really strong. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, that this was this was part one of the the Drain Gang Odyssey. We will pick it up uh, with part two, which I believe will lead off with Ice Dancer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, that'd be right. And then yeah. we'll get into we'll get into all the 2019 material because 2019 and 2020 were big years for these guys. So they were. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to having you on again, Chris. Thank you so much for taking the time, especially You're this late at night. Like, let's get you out of here. So <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's been a pleasure, mate. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Yeah, we really appreciate you know having all your you know your knowledge and obviously your clear enthusiasm for the artists and the material is is it's great stuff. Yeah. Nah, yeah, it's been fun, man. It's been fun. I'll def I'll def- definitely uh, if 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 you would like to have me, I would definitely want to be involved in the second yeah. part. 
oh, either way, I'll be there. You know. Yeah. No yeah. question. No question. He'll he'll be back. You'll you'll, you'll be back for for part two. Um, you know, Patrick, any, any closing thoughts you have on part one? Any, anything you I mean, took away? I'm a bigger fan than I anticipated going into this. Like, <laughs> like there's, I mean, I was not, I was trying to keep my expectations level, like, fair about stuff. And there, I don't love everything, but I love a lot more than I thought I would. And I can definitely see elements of artists that I'm already a fan of. I can see why you wanted me to give this a fair shot and be on the episode. I'll say that much. And I would say that my two, the fact that my two favorites are my two favorites show their like diversity, that they're not just sad ballads, that they're not just an aesthetic, that the uh, working on dying is a completely different side of their sound than Tiger is. And mm. both are incredibly well constructed, tight, economical projects. But then you have the Blade solo stuff that expands a lot more like ever since. And even something that I don't appreciate as much, like Red Light, still has like incredible highs. Like it, ha- in its middle third, or its big highs. Like other, most of his other stuff is like incredibly well sequenced, start to finish. So he constructs his stuff in a really interesting way every time out, too. Even when it doesn't work for me every time. So, and I just mm. see so much artistry in what he does. And yeah. so I'm just a big fan of all this. I can't wait to get into part two. Chris, it's been wonderful having you, and we are living off borrowed time, and our outro music is stagnant pace by Can Kank, as always. Time will dawn upon us.